Hello, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Family Standards Podcast. My name is James Rwindy. And I'm Amanda Armandy Cat. <laughs> the last episode was fun. That's the one with Lex. Oh, yep. It's very confusing because at this at this stage, we haven't posted all the podcasts, so it's hard to know what you've heard versus what we've done. But yes, our last one would have been with Lex. Mm-hmm. And that was a ton of fun. We haven't listened to the edited yet, but hopefully you guys loved it. We wanted to toss in just a just an us episode because we're gonna have another guest on really soon here in a couple of days. So yeah, we wanted to uh, just have a episode of just us. Mm-hmm. Maybe recap a little bit of life and then play a little game. Yes, because like probably it feels like a month ago now we asked everyone on our socials that we wanted to play this. I know this game, but we haven't gotten to it yet. Well, it's also hard to um, commit to a day that we want to drink we don't drink very often it's saturday night tonight so we had nothing better to do we were like okay well we're gonna we're gonna have a couple drinks why not mm-hmm. so anyway what's up what's been going on i don't even know how to start friends just friends just went home a few days ago yeah doing lots of editing like holy crap <laughs> so much freaking editing literally um yeah so from the group that came up um we had sage lex and kitty were all here uh, that was just like last week. So today's Saturday. They left on Monday and we've just been fucking editing a lot. James especially. I've been editing pictures and watermarking and pre-scheduling posts and he's been editing all the content. <laughs> we already got a couple of videos out already, which is great. Yeah, you're so fast. It's actually crazy. But um, but it's been a lot, but we're really excited. We got some really fire content. Uh, also, it was just really nice to have a house full of like-minded people. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many times I just said like, man, sex sex worker friends are just so weird. <laughs> like we just, I'm just like, we're just hanging out around each other, butt ass naked, yeah. touching ourselves and it's no big deal. Yep. It's crazy different. It's uh, the quickest way. I mean, I I can't say I've ever been so comfortable around people before. It happens. It all happens so fast. I love it. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. What an interesting type of friendship. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to be nits because we have the cloud coming next week and then we have a, another following cloud coming next week and they're all, I'm I, assuming they're all going to want to be on the podcast. Mm-hmm. I, I booked us. I, I don't know what I did. I didn't really mean to. It just kind of happened. Uh, but yeah, we've got somebody arriving in the next couple of days here. You guys should be on the next podcast. So, you know, we'll we'll name drop you'll see you'll see uh if you're following along on social medias her and i have been you know flirting online so maybe you already know who it is um and then yeah we've got someone else coming the week after that and then we're going somewhere else at the end of the month so it's just like boom 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 i love it yeah we were just hanging out with friends the other day and we were saying that we know we're also we're going to la and we're going, and then there's that. It's just going all these places, and I'm just like, I literally said, I I can't think one ahead. Uh, I can't think anything further than a week ahead of time right now. Which is crazy. Because like, yeah, I know you booked all those things. I know we're going to the states. I know we're going to a different province, but just like, eh? I can't think like that right now because I'm thinking about all the videos I still have to edit from like weeks ago. I know. It is a lot, um, but honestly, like, I love it will be great the whole goal of this is to have so much content that we can take july and august off from making new content and just enjoy our summer uh we love summer so much so i want to go camping i want to go festivaling and i don't want to fucking worry about anything it was kind of weird because you said that the other day too Mm -hmm. you brought that up and i'm like i mean that's totally that totally does make sense but yeah i understand that we've been working a lot because we have been but it feels normal to be working at this pace Kind of. So it's. Uh, will it feel weird taking the summer off? Probably. Well, I mean, like I don't working. necessarily mean like completely. Off, off. I know, I know. But just like in making content. I, yeah, I don't really want to be doing collabs. I don't want to be like traveling for that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I just want to be like enjoying our summer. Mm-hmm. Being little beach bums as we like to do. So mm-hmm. I know when you said like winter's um, like downtime in my brain, I'm always like, no, winter's hustle time. Summer's, summer is fun time. Winter is hustle. So yeah, here we are. We're hustling. I feel like we had, um, I didn't have any collabs going on. We didn't have any collabs going on for a long time. And um, a couple of months is a long time in my brain. And I was starting to low-key panic about it. I was like, oh no, like, what are we doing? I need to organize things. And then, you know, before you know it, it just like all 
falls into place. That's literally what I said like three ep- two, three yeah. episodes ago. It just all happened. It's going to happen. And then everyone's like, oh my God, you booked so many people in one month. I'm like, I didn't mean to. It just happened. We also got confirmation for one in LA and that's a, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. That's a really good one. So. Yeah. The, the couple that were, are no. you talking about? Um, I'm talking about. The other two I've been talking to? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be crazy too. We were planning on going to LA to work with uh, a couple and we are for the first few days, but I didn't book a return flight hoping that, you know, we could snag a couple other ones while we were down there and uh, it seems to be mapping out quite well. So that's a lot of collabs and this is in April. That's in April. So like literally when you said that today, I'm just like, mm-hmm. oh, it's in April. Wait, today it's March. <laughs> it's next month. <laughs> it's March right now. I'm like, April. it's next. We're going it's to LA next month. Next month. I'm like, what? <laughs> I thought it was like a way, way future thing. So no. that's how that's how my brain's just not working right now. I can't, oh, no. I'm not thinking any further. It's crazy, which I think that's the only for me to, to function at this moment of time. And that's fine. It's one one step at a time. And I know, like as we do more and more of these collabs, obviously it's going to take longer to produce the content, and that's just how it's going to roll. I'm, but we're already backlogged. Um, yeah, but it is what it is. I think we're still doing things a lot faster than a lot of people get yeah. back from people that do filming for them. So. No, I don't know. I think we're doing so far so good. So, do, do we want to touch base about what we talked about this morning? Sure. Yeah. Because did started, I bring it up first? Well, technically you did. You you posted on our family standards. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Instagram posts of a post of us kissing, saying something along the lines of, "Ah, oh, fuck, what is it?" It's. I said something along the lines of like. Just read it out for me. Okay, I said every time we share our love with others, it's like our love for one another grows even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't know you made that post, so I saw it online, and then I just like hugged you or whatever, because I then I then I said I literally had that thought, mm-hmm. like after all the friends left, a little bit during when the friends were there after I flubbed up and I realized that, but then I'm just like ah. Oh, I need to go back, get back to that. And then I realized the same thing that you said. So I thought that was really ironic. Yeah, it's true. I mean, we talked about it this morning already, but um, it's like a mixture of, you know, obviously being turned on or, you know, re-watching you do sexual things with other people that I'm attracted to also is hot first and foremost. But it's also just like, how did I word it this morning? Gosh. Well, I asked you if it was like, is it a jealousy thing? Is right. it, is it like, you know, or was it, um, you see me with other people and it, you know, you see my love for other people. Like I was just trying to make, try to get it out of you. Like, why do you think our love grows in what way? Right. Okay. And then I had also said, you know, like I am, I'm a very particular person and people, people's personalities, quirks, just human beings in general tend to easily annoy me literally for stupid reasons and i'm like i'm fully aware of that um but like the little things that make people human are the little things that can annoy me and there's really not a whole lot of people uh that i've met that don't annoy me to some degree and it's pretty crazy to me that james doesn't annoy me (laughs) that's like a stupid factor of like how to Uh, scale my love for you but I mean it's the truth and like I don't want to go if if the three of them are watching it's not that you guys all annoy me it's just like literally every human on this earth annoys me to some degree and so when I'm like hanging around other people for that period of time and like cluing into little things that annoy me about other individuals and then I look back at James I'm like oh wow you don't annoy me every day that's great that's pretty cool (laughs) yeah but then I say it's it's just because we've been together for so long and I've learned. You've learned how, how to, to work with. You've learned how to not annoy me. Sure. Yeah. But I just learned your personality more. And again, like, and like, yeah. like you said, I didn't talk about this morning, you know, those weird character traits that people have. Again, I feel like he really humanizes people. And I see it as a really cute way. Not everyone's perfect. Mm-hmm. So when I see like weird quirks out of people, weird quirks out of you, I just know that, you know, that's just a part of you, part of who you are. And not to judge that by face value. You know, I used to like really judge, you know, like, Fuck, how do I say this? Really, like saying it sounding really bad or anything, but you know, girls, like you know, those Beckys. Okay. You know, I feel like people, those Beckys get judged really hard, but I've met a few Beckys and just learned a lot about them. And it just really opened my eyes. And then, you know, like having some friends that are just really weird too. 
mm-hmm. like super weird friends and looking beyond their weirdness and seeing what value they actually have as a person. Mm-hmm. Everyone technically has that. So I just learned to like not look at those weird things that you find annoying as annoying, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yes. James in particular does have a lot of annoying friends. <laughs> Guys, I love you all. You're such deep, kind hearted humans. But damn, I can only take them in small quantities. Like, I just am like, oh, by the end of the night, I'm like, ah, I'm fucking, I'm capped out of that person. <laughs> but I love them and they all mean so well. And I know everyone that we've ever interacted with or invited to be with us and, you know, spent time with intentionally, I know that they all mean well. Everybody has great hearts. Doesn't mean they don't annoy me. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, I did say, did I say it was also a little bit of jealousy? Uh, yeah, I think you said so. Yeah, it was a bit of jealousy. Then I went off and said, like, it, this is your first time really feeling jealous from me mm-hmm. and another person. Because I felt that plenty of times from you before and worked through those emotions and worked through how that felt like in my head. And I feel like you're going through a lot of it right now for yourself mm-hmm. and working through it for yourself in your head. Right, yeah. So my thing is that um, to me, like, having sex is like so nonchalant that part is like go ahead like fuck whoever you want doesn't really phase me that much obviously i wouldn't want you just fucking people without telling me but like that's not the part that i get jealous of it's it's when i see um you form like deep connections with people and i don't necessarily think that it's that i'm jealous that you um that you're forming those relations i actually do think that maybe part of me deep down is jealous that Um, or I guess envious is probably the word I should be saying envious that I don't really I feel like I'm incapable to a degree of forming relations like that but it's I I know it's my own fault everyone's capable yeah I'm gonna allow it to happen I'm a little less allowing yes I'm a little less accepting Uh uh-huh but anyways let's get into the uh the long overdue truth or drink questions okay so I posted asking for questions like literally everywhere. I said they needed to be, jeez, I said they needed to be difficult questions because we obviously tell you guys quite literally everything. (laughs) Um, Our cat's doing a little runway walk for us right now. It's very cute. You should be on YouTube, just saying. Um, (laughs) So I did say specifically you guys need to be difficult with your questions if you want us to drink. Um, So... I read some of them they don't seem very promising so I think we're gonna have to do it as like a truth or drink Um, as in we have to tell the truth and if we don't want to tell the truth we have to drink but also if we can't remember drink and I think I had another rule in my head but I don't remember so (laughs) I should drink (laughs) I already took a couple sips of mine did you Mm -hmm. oh shit I went to a different liquor store and I'm really happy because we found these new ciders we really like. And it came out of a variety pack box. So that one's actually stone fruit. Mm. Okay. First things first. What's the first lie you told one another? I've had time to think about this and I still don't know the answer. I have a bad memory, so. I can't think of anything. I know. I literally can't think of anything. Let's drink. <laughs> Doesn't mean we haven't, but like, I don't think so. At least like nothing like that sticks out or nothing that's really like yeah big or... I don't know. Have you ever tasted a booger? Hmm. It's funny because we talked about this when we had the three of them over for the collab. I think we were playing with the fake cum. Oh, we weren't talking about tasting boogers. Because ta- I used to roll I know, boogers. This is, this is segues into it. Okay. So like, yeah, you used to roll boogers and uh-huh. you used to do that thing, uh-huh. the stringy thing. Yeah. I always thought it was so sick. Like I, when I was a kid, I would see kids pick their nose and and, and, and eat, eat it. it. And I'm like, that disgusts me. Yeah. So I don't think I ever did, but I do recall at least one time being curious and maybe trying it once or something. Okay, so same. But in elementary school, and I'm not going to say your name, but I still know her name. Like, that's how much she stood up to me. <laughs> I used to see her all the time, pick her nose and fucking eat it. And it was disgusting to me. And I was, I'm not going to lie, I picked my nose, but I was the one that would like squish it up in my fingers, make little strings with it, roll it up in a ball, and then like flick it away. Um, So that was always what I used to do. Anyway, I did once try uh, eating or like tasting a booger just because I was like, what is this bitch on? Like, am I missing out? And it wasn't good. So 
<laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Let us know if you eat your boogers or if you did, I suppose. I would hope as an adult you're not eating your boogers anymore. Um, what is the most embarrassing photo on your phone? Photo? Yeah. That's dumb. That is dumb. What? A naked photo of me. <laughs> Look, that's dumb. Maybe that's it. If it's a dumb question, we just have to take a drink. Um, yeah, sorry. That's that's dumb just because we obviously have like stupid photos. I don't, I don't get embarrassed. What is embarrassing at this point? I don't even get point, embarrassed right? anymore. Like, I don't know. Um, have you ever had any sexual feelings towards a family member? Okay, so like when <laughs> when a sister and I were younger, mm -hmm. we'd, we'd, we'd stay in that one room. And I think we told each other, like, if we would, if we grow up and we, and we don't find partners, then we're going to get married. You and, you, you and Christina? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cute, though. A little bit. As, as, <laughs> and like, then we grew older and we fucking just hated each other more and I was, more. I was going to say siblings that say that. That's kind of cute. You don't know any better. You don't know. No. How, how old? Like I don't know. Elementary school. Oh, yeah. You don't really. Yeah. That's all. That's cute. I, I wonder if she um. even remembers that. <laughs> well, too bad, Christina. <laughs> I got them um i definitely have but i will preface this by saying we were not blood related and we are no longer considered family members um my stepdad at the time ooh, he's gonna come cuddle me because he got in trouble earlier yeah, for me he's pooping on the floor bad boy bad boy today my stepdad's brother son so i guess my cousin i had my my step cousin my god uh i definitely like had a bit of a crush on him because he was older than me mm -hmm. but um yeah no not anymore oh my gosh okay are you comfy you're pulling on my headphones bud all right uh if you woke up with the opposite genitalia what's the first thing you would do like that's a funny question of course we're gonna mm -hmm. answer that you're obviously gonna stroke the cock and i'm obviously gonna put a finger inside of me that's it i mean that's the first thing i would do that's, the, that's what it says, right? That's the first thing? Yeah, I guess so. If yes? Want, yeah, what's the first thing you would do? I think both genders would... Yeah, I think you would both just people masturbate. just touch yourself. Yeah, I guess so. What do you mean? I just keep thinking that I want to like put it in weird things. Oh, you'd probably do that after. I'd yeah. probably want to find one of your dildos and try to stick it inside of me. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. It just is the first one. See, guys, these questions aren't hard enough. Let's Wait, go. So these are people's questions? These are every are these all people's questions? Yes. Oh, okay. They're from everywhere. They weren't online search at all. Like you didn't add anymore? No. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know. These that. are all from these are all from you guys. Come on, guys. I know. <laughs> Fuck. Um, okay. Like this one too. When you think of the best sex you've ever had, who was it with? You. Duh. Same. And like that's that's actually no cap, and anyone who's listened to this long enough knows that. We have great sex. Like the only like the only person that would like be the runner up if it was before you or just a different person would be that one girl that I like she came to town. Dirt pod girl? Yeah, I didn't want to say that. Why? <laughs> but yes. Um Dirt pod girl? Because the sex was crazy for like a hookup. I didn't, right. I, I never really had a hookup growing up. Uh huh. Uh even more of a hookup though cuz she was here for the whole week and we basically hung out with each other every day when that she was here. Mm -hmm. Uh but that was probably the best sex since bef that was probably the best sex before you. Fair. And I was younger. I was way younger, too. Mm -hmm. I was in like my early 20s, 21, 22. I could name some that were okay, but like none were great, you know? So, except yeah. for you. But we've just, we've had the time to learn each other's bodies exactly. and we can communicate properly about what we want. So, um, okay. What's the grossest thing you do at home when you're alone? I mean, I don't even have to be alone, but I guess some people can find this gross. Sometimes when I scratch my balls, I sniff it. Okay, yeah, that's... I actually think it smells kind of good. Actually, the next time next time it has a smell, I kind of want you to smell it. Because you like my you <laughs> like my crumb, you like my armpit, you like the way I smell, and I don't think it's very far off. Your, like your, your ball sack. Yeah. Well, I don't know why my brain was thinking your butthole, your no. ball sack, okay. Yeah, that's what I said. Ball sack. Wait, what? Didn't I say ball sack? Ball sack, but yeah. my brain was thinking asshole. Oh, no. And I was like, huh? Okay, um... I don't think I do that many gross things, to be quite honest, except for like, you know, pop my like pubic region ingrown hair pimple things once in a blue moon. It's also like, what do you consider like, gross? That's, you know. What do you consider gross? I don't know. Right? Yeah. I, uh, I'm a picker, so I pick my skin a lot. I do pick my nose once in a while, but I usually just blow it because it's usually just snotty. So you don't like to pick snotty noses. Uh, I burp. 
but I do that in front of you, but they're like I aggressive. Burps. I don't think it's gross. Another iffy question. I'll drink for that. Yeah, I don't know. Cheers. I'm very we... disappointed right now. Uh, I hope it gets better. Well, hopefully. Haven't you seen them all? No. Well, okay. I have, but I typed them out so fast. I like copy and pasted them off like Facebook mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, do you love anal sex? How many people have you done it with? I can't say I love it. I like it. I like it a lot in the right moments. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say I love it. And it definitely can't be the only thing going on. I need stimulation in the other, in the other regions too. Or else it's just like full body goosebumps and like... I, what was I saying to you? It's like the first five minutes of anal. I feel like I might be going sick. Going in shock or something. I feel like I'm going in shock. Yeah. Like my whole body gets cold and goosebumpy and I get sweaty. And like, I just feel like I'm going to be sick. And then once I get past that, it's great. But that's also when you like, when you're not fully aroused and you're forcing it too much, especially for work. Well, especially that's when different. it's for work. When you're but not when, like when we're having sex, up to it. We're having casual sex and I slow roll you. Like, oh, you yeah. Like, there's times where you didn't even notice that my finger's inside of you. Yeah. And then, then that turned you on and then we, then we stick it There's in. There's a big difference. Yeah, that's true. Th- yeah, that's very true. And I do like it like that. And I do like it when it's, um, when I'm clean and prepared for it, for sure. But, um, yeah. How many people have you done it with? I actually think I've only done it with two. Hmm. Pretty sure just you and my ex. You were my first. I'm, I think you knew that already. I did know that. Yeah. And I, for me, I'm, I'm a man that doesn't really care. Like, You're not an anal enthusiast. I'm, I, it, there's been times where I'm fucking you from the back and everyone's right. You do have a nice looking butthole <laughs> and you're like, damn, I kind of want to stick because it makes you feel like you're doing something dirtier. Maybe that's the thing. Yeah, it's um, so like so like that there's there's a one occasion where I'm like, wow, like that's making me I really want to put it in. But other than that, I never ask you for anal. I don't know. And at, at times, does he I had talked to this but Sage too. like it doesn't even feel as good at times. He said that, too, though. He agreed with you. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. I, I, I don't think anal feels better than than um, vaginal sex. It just makes me last a little bit longer because I don't feel it, it as much. It doesn't have as much texture inside. And if it can make you come as quick, yeah. then pro. Yes, I'll, I'll fuck you up the ass. If that... It almost always does exactly. make me come very quickly. Mm-hmm. But it just takes a long time to warm up to it, for mm-hmm. sure. Especially a fucking penis. Dear God. I was actually... <laughs> I was saying to Sage, like... You're a fucking trooper. He just took it like nothing. <laughs> yeah, he's a champ. I was like, wait, what? He I gotta just, he's, ste- on a, he's just on a whole different level. Put me but to shame. He absolutely loves it. Yeah. He obviously loves it. You don't obviously love it. Mm, that's disappointing. Why? I don't know. I want to be better at it. I don't have to, more. though. It's not like I'm forcing you to. You want to do it for no, me or anything. I know. I do get asked for it more than I uh, give. But then yeah. at least when I do give it on my sites, I'm like, hey, here it is. And they're really excited about it. So yeah, I do do it. Just not all the time. Uh, okay. What's next? Uh, what's the most disgusting thing you've ever done with your partner in bed? If it was considered disgusting, then it was probably wasn't mutually like talked about. Mm-hmm. Say I was really into pooping mm-hmm. hypothetically and <laughs> you let me do it on you. Well then, if you, and you were into it too, then would we consider that disgusting? I think the question is supposed to just be like, what would the public think is the most disgusting okay. thing you do? No, nothing. We're so vanilla, really. <laughs> Other than when I accidentally pooped on you, that was pretty, pretty shitty. Again, accident. <laughs> but it was an accident. Um, I don't think we do anything gross. Nope. I mean, some people might think um, like eating each other's asses is gross. Sure. So. Sure. Why not? Uh, maybe some of the dirty talk that we do or i don't know, I don't know. but like yeah nothing really no i agree i'm gonna drink just because we're boring <laughs> just because we like to have hot steamy sex sorry guys it's it is what it is although i will say i did really enjoy pegging i do think i would want to dabble with that more there was a fun dominant woman over man thing that like occurred in my brain it was pretty exciting he's being crazy he's trying to play he's trying to play are you trying to get my duck yes that's my anxiety duck you can play (laughs) with it if you're nice to him be nice to him what's (laughs) what's your number be honest no lies fuck i always forget and every time i say it to you you always say that it's more than i say um for some reason 11 just keeps 11 just keeps popping up in my mind, but I don't know. I don't, I could literally count it, but, uh, and I don't count 
and everyone in the sex industry anymore. So like I capped it at 11. <laughs> okay. You capped it at 11. You're not going to count anyone? Well, if it's not sex related, if it's not sex industry related, if it's a genuine sexual experience, then yes, I would. But I don't know. I don't, when I fuck people for work, I just don't consider it at all. Interesting. Okay. Give me a sec, guys, because I do have a list. Hold on. Oh, wow. This is confusing. Fucking encrypted in some secret folder or something. Yeah, well, no, it's just in my notes. Okay. So um, I have 28 men three of which were for work and i have 16 women five of which were not for work do with that as you please i don't actually know what that number actually equals what's 28 plus 16 44 considering when i met you i think it was at you were number 27 i think Hmm. really i think so you fucked that many people yeah (laughs) (laughs) the fuck (laughs) that's crazy (laughs) Well, You've had that many sexual partners <laughs> since being with me? What the fuck? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> That's whack. I, <laughs> okay, okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Five since being with you, I think. Nope, six, seven. Seven since being with you. That's not bad. <laughs> it's pretty good. 11, make, 11 does make sense now in my head. 11? Yeah, it does make sense now. I think when we first started dating, you had told me seven. And I was like, that's awfully low. I didn't I didn't have lots of sexual experiences. I told you that, though. Yeah. I'm having way more now in my in my late 20s and going into my 30s than I uh-huh. ever did when I was younger. Like, again, I'm, I had a very traditional childhood. <laughs> that's hanging, my dog. Hanging out with friends, you know, taking our time becoming sexually active. So Hey, now. <laughs> I heard the shade in that. No, there's no shade. I lost my virginity at 13. Look at, I, us, look at us now. You could even tell that my number is 11. Exactly, Come on. Exactly. <laughs> and then I had a lot of like long-term boyfriends. It just like every time I, w- I got, I broke up with someone, I went into like a full-blown slut hoe phase for a few months and like they would rack up rather quickly. Yeah, see, I broke up with my long-term gr- term girlfriend and I tried to get into a whore phase, but it just doesn't work out the same way <laughs> as a man. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> anyway. There's that. What is your go-to porn? Mm, probably POV. I just like POV. Sex? Yep. Boy-girl sex? Yep. But this is kind of off topic. When I was thinking when, when I was thinking about like potentially doing a threesome with you, MMF, mm-hmm. when we were having these conversations years ago, or even like thinking about doing it with some people in the future, I did watch some mmf stuff back in the day when i when i'd see that I, it would really turn me off really yeah it would really turn me off seeing more than one male okay in the scene and then um yeah just to get my brain more comfortable with the idea of potential for the future for work with you because that's what you want i watched some mm-hmm. just to see how i'd feel and um didn't do anything didn't turn me on didn't, interesting didn't do anything for me but then experiencing it in real life was completely different than watching it hmm. it really was and now I don't even think about it. Now it's just like, oh, whatever. Two, three guys, whatever. <laughs> Keep adding them in and change it. But you don't watch that for porn? No, I don't watch it for porn. Though. Okay, okay. No. Uh, yeah, my go-to porn is, is solo, male and female. I don't know why. I very rarely find people actually having intercourse to be something that gets me off. It's definitely like self-pleasure, which we talked about already. <laughs> what would make you immediately swipe left? That's no, right? Yeah, that's like, fuck no. Hmm. I guess the only thing I can really say is from like recently, like when we're, when we're on our dating app still, mm-hmm. if I see anything like, if I'm like, oh, I'm really Christian. Oh, I just yeah. swipe left immediately because I, I know they're not going to fucking, when mm-hmm. they read my description and they see a picture of you in it too, they're, they're not going to swipe it. So there's no point. So right. if I see religion like that, I just swipe left. What about anything for like appearance? Is there anything for appearance? Um, I mean, if I'm just not physically attracted to them. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll swipe left. So, like, my biggest thing, like, physically, teeth. I'm so sorry. Janky teeth is, like, teeth are, like, my my go-to thing with people. I love pretty smiles. Uh, so, teeth for sure. But and quirky then, teeth can be nice, too. Depends what you mean by quirky, but yes. Little fangs or something. Oh, yeah, no, they don't need to be perfect. My teeth aren't perfect. 
your top teeth are gorgeous. Your yeah. bottom ones aren't you quite perfect, very much when I but smile. they don't stand out. Like it's not like they're not. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know. know. They don't have to be perfect, but like you need to have a nice smile if that makes sense. So there's that, and then yeah, I mean, f- totally religion. Or if anywhere in their bio it says they don't like cats. Bye bye. Yeah, but like that could have been my bio. Yeah, and I wouldn't have given you a chance if that was in your bio. <laughs> if you it, don't like cats to the point that I didn't you need like to cats. put that in your bio, that's fair. That's pretty extreme. That's fair. Like yeah, in our bio, I, in my bio, I actually say, and because you know Bumble has those like topic references mm. it says i hope i really hope you're not dot 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 mine is allergic to cats ah exactly <laughs> yeah like you mean it if you put that in your fucking dating yeah, app bio totally that makes sense what does each partner do extraordinarily well in the bedroom guys i'm thirsty but you, you ride me so good he likes it especially, when i ride him like a dirty little porn star yeah. i mean we, i don't know if I, i've said this on the podcast before but i express it to you since you've gotten in the sex industry, you, you, you fuck like a porn star. <laughs> I mean, but of course, right? Like, it's so funny to see you doing more scenes in front of the camera more and more and more and seeing you kind of blossom in that. And then I remember when it first started happening, when you translated that into our personal life, I was like, damn. And it just keeps escalating. It doesn't stop. So it's like, I remember where guys would like rant and rave about their girls. Yeah, she fucks like a porn star. I'm like, my wife literally fucks like a porn star and she literally is one. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, yeah. So you, yeah, you, I love what you're talking about. It's, it's when I'm on top of you, I like to smother him, his face. I'll hold his head and I'll like smother his face in my tits so he can barely breathe. And then I'm also like twerk fucking you. Yeah, you twerk. And you're you, holding you onto that. my ass. Yeah, yeah. And so you're getting, you're getting like suffocated by my tits and my ass at the same time. I like to like. Yeah. Does that turn you on doing that? Yeah. Well, I just feel like I could. Do you enjoy doing that? Oh, yeah, acting for sure. up like that? Yeah, I do. Okay. Just curious. Especially because I can see the like euphoria. Is that the word? If, sure. Yeah. Whatever on your face. Yeah, I definitely do. Um, James is exceptionally good at cunnilingus. <laughs> is that the right word? Cunnilingus. Why are you using that word? Because it's funny. Uh, he literally like makes out with your pussy. As, like, you, as you should. I, and like I've even asked you like damn what do you do with your tongue like how, how do are you, do you doing what you're doing with your tongue because like I want to be able to do that to like females too but. so I never I can't even remember what eating pussy was like before you uh. like I said I can't even remember what sex was like before you it just none of it even matters right which makes me feel like in my head I really started like eating pussy because of you probably well you said your exes didn't really like you doing it so I've you always been I've much. always felt like I've been a pleaser so yeah I, I never would do it very much but innately inside of me I just fucking love it and you really brought it out in me I remember this one moment where it just clicked in my brain I was like dude because and, and I know this back in the day I would read magazines of like how do you know how do you uh-huh. go down on a girl or whatever right and in your head you just do the steps right like you touch the clip. Do this. Do you do that. this. You do this. Uh-huh. It was really robotic. And until I grew my love with you, I just realized, dude, just show her that you love her and you love her pussy. And it's as simple as that. So I just, I, 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 passion, I passionately eat you out. It's true. <laughs> How did like... His tongue makes love to my clit. Like, and it's then you just pretty you, wild. You experiment. I still do different. I still learn to try different things. You with do. You. There's times where I just, Sometimes I like lift my head up. I'm like, holy fuck, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, I wish I could see. That's the one thing is like you get a really great visual of when I'm sucking your dick. Oh, of course, every guy. I does. really wish that there was a better position for me to be able to like actually see for all sure. the bits. Even for camera, it's hard. Like it when is you're recording, tough. Eating, your face is just up. in the way. I just I do the fake look from the side, and yeah. then I I'm barely even licking you out, and it's just not a good. No, I, most people don't care about people do love it though. Camera. Some people do really like it. Yeah, that's good. Um, they should. I used to never either uh, during the porn scene. I always skip through that part. I know. Well, and like, that's get to the it. dick sucking. Yes, but now it's a different story. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, the world is changing. So far, this has just been tooting our own horns. This whole podcast. Is. Ooh, what's one thing you <laughs> wish? You- Fact. <laughs> what's one thing you wish your partner did better in the bedroom okay not better maybe maybe it's something i wish you'd just do more and it's funny because like back in the day i would think this is very hot but really it isn't you don't really feel much but you know if i'm fully inside of you and you're just you're just grinding or there's not really much penetration going on but it's more just like the tip of my penis is touching your spot yeah and grinding more I do like that a lot, especially mm. with you, because I really love you, and the grinding really feels passionate. I never passionate. thought you liked it. Um, so yeah, but like 
But also, I don't like our penetrative sex either. That's probably why I never brought it up. But mm. it's nice. It's, it's nice to slow down too. So if I need a little bit of a break, you uh-huh. just grind yeah, yeah, your yeah. body on top of me. Well, you worded that nicely. I'm just I just chugged my drink because I don't really want to answer it because I don't really. Not yeah. that I would feel away. If it's something I can improve on, obviously, you tell me. <laughs> We're still just trying to figure out how you can get me to squirt. That's just still. Mm. I, I th- it would be we nice. We just need to talk it through more while it's happening. We yeah. haven't actually had a, we haven't been able to have a session where we just sit down and talk it through. It's very difficult too because when I pooped on him was because I was squirting, and so now I have this um, fear of pooping. Fear on of poop when I'm squirting. So to the point where we filmed another scene, and um, she purposely put a butt plug up her up her butt so that she wouldn't poop on me. But then it, just, it wouldn't. She couldn't get the position to feel right, and it just wouldn't. It didn't feel the same. So here's the thing: I didn't think I would need to do a full back door clean when I am just shooting vaginal sex squirting. I really didn't think I need to do a full back door clean that day in particular. I decided to do a full back door clean, but it wasn't a good back door day, if you know what I mean. Some days are just not good back door days. So even after being cleaned, regular or religiously, I don't know what the word is. After I cleaned, I was still like, nah, I'm not confident that I'm not still going to poop on him. So yeah, I put a butt plug in, hoping that that would stop me from possibly pooping. And then I couldn't squirt. And then as soon as I took it out, I was able to squirt. And if you get frustrated, that even makes it even worse. And you get So head. it's very frustrating. I would like that to be able to be something that eventually you can do. But it's very difficult even for me to do it. I've expressed I, that before. I'm, I'm surprised you still want to after, you know, learning about squirt and urine and shit. I... I I'm shocked, to be honest. Yeah, well, it's probably just because you like it still. Okay. You're not freaked out by it. I'm not. Plus, the people like it, so. And it does feel good okay. when it's done right. Doesn't mean it's an orgasm, but it still feels good. That one video that hasn't even come out yet, the one where you got that yeah, really big I one. Know. Holy crap, that was insane. I hope OnlyFans doesn't take that one down. Cause Why would they? Because they're really weird about squirt. It has to be like, it has to be... Like, you have to be, like, doing something to yourself. And when that happened, nothing was inside of me. It just fucking, like, cannoned across you, the room. You, had, you were doing something with yourself? Oh, with the wand? Yeah. yeah so okay. you're still doing something. Anyway, we're learning how to be a super, super soaker. 5,000. We're trying. Uh, okay. What's the biggest secret you promised to keep but didn't? Mm, I'm probably going to drink just for confidentiality on that one. <laughs> Ooh. It's the most recent one that I can think of. So it's people that we don't talk to anymore. Ooh. You I know all these people. Okay. You're going to tell me about that after. Um, and I'm going to drink because I actually don't know. I don't remember stupid shit. I literally have no idea. Will Wendy or has Wendy ever let you peg him? Wow. I really appreciate them using the moniker. Wendy. That's, that's dope. Um, again, I have no ambition no no want for that and even if i did i probably wouldn't want my my wife doing it to me um uh i mean not that that, but lately i've been talking about being more sub to you yeah so i mean that's quite subby that's really subby it's very subby i don't think i could i would like i i just said like what did i say you can slap me you can slap me in the ass but you we were talking about choking we're talking about choking right oh but like i just still you don't really like it when i choke you no no so there's if if i'm any subby it's very little Mm -hmm. um but no, like, I barely even like butt stuff. You know, like, I need mm-hmm. to do, try it more, but, like, my experiences of it. No. Very indifferent. Yeah. So, yeah, no, he's never been pegged and likely won't. Probably won't. Um. Yeah. I like to do the pegging. Pegging Sage was, like, super fun. I've already said, I said when Sage was here, that you're going to have to see him a lot more. I know, yeah. I feel like this video, <laughs> this video is popping off. It's going, Everyone is super well. excited even about all it. all the comments on, even, like, Facebook and stuff. Uh-huh. People are, men being like, I wish that was me. I wish that was me. Like, can I be next? So the video Crazy. that Sage and I did, I actually put it out to um, my fans being like, do you guys want, like, a dommy mommy video where I, like, just dom the shit out of him and peg him? Or, like, tell me what you want. Like, what kind of pegging do you want? And most people said they actually wanted, like, a genuine sex tape. So, you know, he literally fucked me. And then we flipped the switch. And and then I pegged him. And it was, like, a really normal sex tape. And everyone's eating it up. And I honestly think it's because men just wish that that could be a normal part of their lives. Or sex lives. A lot of men. Not all men. But, um, you know, a lot of them don't necessarily have that, like, sub kink, but, like, want to still be pegged. And I think that's fine. 
it's cool to normalize it more like that. That was also your first scene that we filmed, okay? <laughs> and with him. Oh, well, it's the first scene today. Oh, first we're gonna, scene of the day. Let's let's that Sage fuck you and then you fuck him. Well, I also wanted to make sure, like, I do know that obviously with anal content, you do want to be like fasted to a degree. So I also just wanted to make sure we did it earlier in the day, and sure. just in case. And yeah, you're a bit nervous for that one. I was a little bit nervous. Just because you didn't know Sage. I didn't know him that well. You yeah. literally met him the night before. Yeah. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is the first time I'm fucking another man. Right, and I'm recording. And you're recording it. <laughs> Which I told you, everything was fine. You oh, yeah. you seemed more, yeah, you seemed more nervous than, than I, I, don't, I was nervous at all, to be honest, other than the camera not functioning. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I felt fine. It's crazy, you guys. What the fuck? Yeah, what is our lives? <laughs> our lives are crazy. Have you ever done something really mean or backstab a friend? I mean, yes. Definitely. I can't think of anything. I can't think of any anything in particular, but like I know I have, for sure. Yeah, I can't think of anything. I'll drink anyways. Though. <laughs> it's really hard for me to remember stuff. Like, man, this is a silly question. Who has more junk slash crap? Hmm. Well, we're pretty equal. I think. I uh, yeah. I'd say it's. I'd say it's a good equal. Even we're not hoarders, but. Maybe I have a little bit more only because I have dead relatives, so I have their stuff in the shed. Maybe I think of more like, I think of more like costumes and stuff mm. and craft stuff that you've had collective accumulated. Yeah. So maybe I do have more than you. You might have a little bit more than me, but it's nothing crazy. Yeah. Ooh, what a, what a steamy question. I know. <laughs> if we're talking about uh, the badonk of a donk junk, then it's definitely you. I have more. Have you ever done anything sexual with a family member? No. No, definitely not. I've had some pretty crappy incidences as a as a youngin where my uncles would get drunk and like slap my ass at Christmas time and think that was cute. I guess technically speaking, I had this. <laughs> yeah, you've had the same thing. Uncles touch you inappropriately. I, I guess so. Yes. That ain't cute. Moving on. Um, have you ever cheated? No. <sighs> I really gotta think about this one because I'm pretty confident that I didn't. But I'm also confident that I remember one night in particular where I definitely was trying to and it okay. fell through. Okay. So the the thoughts were there. The thoughts were there and had it of played out the way that I actually wanted it to, it would have happened. My boyfriend was also like not present and I felt very neglected by him. And so I actually like wanted to do it with his best friend. <laughs> Brutal. Spiteful bitch. But his best friend got too drunk. And it didn't end up happening. I thought you were going to say, but his best friend like declined out of like, you know. No, like his best friend was flirting with me the entire night. Like Damn, it was good. not a best friend. It what was going to go fuck? through and then he got too drunk. That's not a best friend. Mm. Anywho, I didn't cheat. I've been cheated on. So have I. Yeah. But for the same reason that why you wanted to cheat on him. You? My exes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Women. It's men too, but. Yeah. What was the last thing you masturbated to? Well, technically my last thing that I masturbated to was uh, I just had to film a solo, a free solo to go on my page and I really wanted to use one of my big old um, dragon dildos because I don't know why, I have a thing for the dragon dildos. So like technically it was on camera, but it was very authentic. What was the last thing you masturbated to? Like what was what was in your brain? Like, what made you masturbate? Were you, like, watching porn? Were you thinking of I'm someone? I'm always Were watching you... porn. I'm literally watching porn 24-7 right now, editing videos. <laughs> Are you masturbating when you're doing that, though? No. But, I'm like, I'm aroused. I'm thinking. I'm aroused at times. But he's asking about masturbating. I can't even remember the last time I masturbated at this point. <laughs> <laughs> We've been having so much, like, work sex and personal sex. We're having so much sex. I can't even remember the last time I <laughs> masturbated. So I can't even tell you. <laughs> um, the time before this time that I'm telling you about was because we were gonna film and i figured out that when i'm filming my fucking vaginal canal is so short and if i'm not actually really aroused prior to filming i'm a little pansy and i can't really take it fair and so i've come to the conclusion that before filming i need to just like get myself off first Ooh, what a hard life i know and so <laughs> if i get off again while we're filming great but Perfect. at least at least when you orgasm like everything's like naturally lubricated yeah. and i really do feel like my i think it's true your vaginal canal like expands so it gets yeah more space in it you can sage would approve on that yeah you, you can fit more inside of you when you're aroused so the time before that was i made uh, well i was gonna do it on my own but then you offered 
to help get me off before filming. Yeah, but you expected me to help you, right? Uh, I wasn't. I was in the bedroom with you. You closed the door behind you. True. You're, were you gonna? Were you just gonna masturbate beside me? Yeah. And expect me not to do anything? Well, I had to save your cum for the for the video. That's so funny. Obviously, I was gonna get involved. <laughs> and the time before that, I did the same thing in the bathroom because you were busy with someone else, and I couldn't ask you, so I did it by myself. I did a lot of mat- masturbation Good apparently when the house was I'm full. I'm proud of you. And then the three girls, we all just masturbated on the couch. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, Kitty's gonna go masturbate. You should, you should go beside her and like, and like film it." Like, no, I don't want to do that. I can't do that. Next thing you know, all three girls are on the couch masturbating with each other. I'm like, what the fuck? That was crazy. Yeah, she was so funny. I thought she was going to like, she said out loud, like, oh, I'm going to go masturbate. Like, do, do, do. And I thought she was going to go like into her room or something. And now she just like comes out of here into the couch and we're all just chilling over oh, she there. She was going to film it. She, she, she was going to film it? Yeah, I think she was going to film uh-huh. it. That's, that's why she came out here. Okay. So yeah, we ended up all masturbating together. Team masturbation. And then I came first, which is crazy. Yeah. On a scale of 1 to 10, rate your partner's bedroom skills. I don't want to give you a number out of 10. I don't like rating anything out of 10. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> so if I had to say anything, I'd be like, 9 and a half or 9 or something like that. Because it can always be better. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel about it. I don't like rates out of 10. I think that's dumb. I think I don't like rating out of 10, yeah. I got another drink. I have a bunny. I'll grab it then. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done drunk that you've regretted? Drinking. <laughs> <laughs> drinking too much that's what i regret <laughs> fuck i hate alcohol james hates alcohol yeah <laughs> um as we're we're playing this game but he does not that's why he's gonna be behind me because i'm i enjoy drinking um okay what have i ever done drunk that i regretted well getting arrested that's what <laughs> i've talked about that on here before uh that was definitely the worst thing i've ever done drunk and definitely regret um, and then also, um, trigger warning. I'm going to say that one more time. Trigger warning, sexual assault. <laughs> Definitely. That was the same incident. No, I mean like being R worded. Oh. Yeah. That was pretty brutal. I was too drunk though. So what, what was the question? What have you ever done drunk that you regretted? Oh, but you technically didn't do it. <sighs> well, I mean, I technically was so drunk that I couldn't stop it. Yeah. So, you know, I guess I did do it to an extent. <clears throat> that was dark. Sorry. Sorry, guys. We'll get back to normal, normal stuff now. Have you ever questioned the life that you two have together? More current, not as newlyweds. Currently? So, like, they want to, they want to talk about lifestyle-wise. I don't know. Have you ever questioned the life that you two have together? I'm thinking that they mean like, have we ever questioned not having a life together? I mean, yeah, basically. Like, Is that what they're saying? Yeah, but they're saying current. Okay. It's like our lifestyle now. Okay. Polyamorous. Mm. Uh, sex industry. Okay. I would say no. I actually had more. Uh huh. Oh, what is, how do they word it? I had more questions. Have you ever questioned the life? I questioned it more when we weren't in the industry. Mm-hmm. I've never been so sure now that we're in the industry. But there were times where I was just like, wow, she's really mad at me. Yeah. Like, is this going to end right now? Yeah. Now? No, I don't think about it at all. We haven't had anything recent for they, sure. They, th- they think more now because of the lifestyle we have, uh-huh. which is very ironic that way. We've talked back and forth about like whether or not we truly think that the polyamorous lifestyle is for us and like... You know, I think that that's going to always be a constant communication about where we're at in our relationship and Mm -hmm. whether it's a good time for that or not. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that's fine. But But I don't question my No, we don't don't question if we want to not continue life together. There's no one else. There's literally no one else. No. (laughs) I literally said to you this morning, like, I, well, I say it often. I'm actually shocked that I have a husband. I'm shocked that James is my husband. (laughs) It's pretty baffling. I'm not good with humans. I don't know if my social interaction skills have gotten so much worse since not being in the restaurant industry too. Maybe. I think that that's maybe a big part of it. Maybe. Um, I'm really bad at interacting with people. So like, I feel like I got you at a really good time because I feel like I'm so much worse now. And I've gotten better. Yeah, you've gotten better. I've gotten a lot better. <laughs> so. so. It's a good combo to be honest. <laughs> and it really is. I'm literally more business and you're more personable. But it works out really good. I like arrange all the collabs and everybody gets here and I'm like, work, work, work. And James is like, 
energy, so energy, energy. Support, 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 support. Yes, yes, totally. 100%. 100%. And I join in at time to time, but my brain is very like scheduled work. So I think mm-hmm. together we make a good duo for that. And I think lots of people would agree. Yeah. I was just editing back on the podcast and Lex was even saying that we were really great hosts, you know, like she's like, because I asked her, did you feel at home? And she's like, yeah, I do. Like you guys did such a good job. And you're even, you're like, oh, like, I think, I think we do good. I'm a fucking maniac. And I'm like, I must buy new towels for them. I must do everything. I must cook. But like our towels are hand-me-downs from our parents. Yeah, our towels were trash. We actually haven't bought new towels since being together. No. So. We hadn't bought a lot of things. That's true. That's true. (laughs) It's just just stupid stuff that I'm not embarrassed about when it's just the two of us. But if somebody else comes in, I'm like, no, no, no. I I think about that very often too, which is another reason why I feel like we're so compatible, is our, our level of cleanliness or care for cleanliness very, very is the same. the same. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, sometimes the kitchen will get like a little bit messy, but I don't get mad about it that you're creating a mess. Like, or it's not like, it's not over. It's just the same. Yeah. Like, there's no better way of explaining that. It literally is the same, which I'm really grateful for. We allow the for. house to get to a certain level before we're both like itching to clean it. We're exactly. not spazzes about every exactly. little thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Very, that helps a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is complicated. Hold on. Both have eternal life, but only one has eternal youth. If you are why, would you still fuck in 50, 70, 90 plus years? Okay, what? It's very confusing. I think it means if we could both live forever, but one of us is going to age and one is going to stay young, would we still be having sex when we're turning 50, 70, 90? So like when I turn into... I I know, I get the question. Yeah. Well, who's going to, who's, let's start know, to this. Who's going to stay young? Hopefully me, because. Okay, let's say you. If you stay young and I get old, well, no doubt I'm going to want to fuck you if I'm still functioning. Yeah. Of course I'm going to fuck you, but will you want to fuck me since I'm still old? I'm not going to lie. I've seen some like old man porn on Twitter. I'd do it. Okay. And then I'll slip it then. If I was going to stay young and you were going to go old, I mm-hmm. think, I think it's the same if you're still feeling up to it. But I mean, like. I think the older you're, I probably kinda, won't feel up to it. Exactly. So yeah. that's just that's the reality of that weird ass <laughs> hypothetical question. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I I I've already literally been talking about how like I can feel how different my hormones and my sex drive is, even from like middle school, high school. God, I was a horn dog. I'm not really a horn dog anymore. Um, I am sometimes, but like something has to has to arouse. Yeah me first i'm not just horny out of nowhere anymore and i used to be horny out of nowhere when i was younger and i do kind of miss that so i definitely don't think that's going to get better with my age um so i think it'd be better if i stayed young you got old i mean and i would definitely still fuck you because yeah let's be real i'm not gonna look that old still no asians don't raise in i'm gonna say it again i'll just need to keep sexy dancing on top of you that really turned you on yeah the other day (laughs) yeah you gonna have to make your sexy dance for me. I know. I need to take time for that. I'm too busy right now. Have you ever been to a sex club? Would you? No. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> Most definitely. Easy peasy. Yeah. My thing is I would really like to go to a sex club and be able to participate. But my biggest thing now is obviously, again, testing. I would Most love to- are. Most legitimate ones are, though. You but just have to make sure you get into the right one. To ones. what to what degree? Like are these are we trusting that everyone got tested and I know. didn't fuck anyone before? I know. The whole concept is pretty right? tough. Like, but that's why that's why this in my opinion, that's why certain sex clubs or sex groups, they're so tightly woven is because they trust each other. Mm. So if you get accepted into a group, mm-hmm. I think that's what and into important like and you feel everyone's energy and you feel it, I think that's what's important. Right. So I definitely would. I think it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. I think for us, the reality of like testing and STDs is just so much, it's so heightened because of what we do for work now. And it's just, it's hard not to think about it in that way or not in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, have you ever thought about someone else while having sex? No, not, no. And I don't think I ever have. I don't think I've ever thought about, oh, I guess like in order, there's times for me to like not come so quick. Mm-hmm. I think I'll think about like my grandma or something. <laughs> this is like... Uh, That's when we first started dating. Maybe one time or something like that, I would think about. But typically speaking, my go-to was always, what was my grade nine um, class schedule? I'm like, okay, block A, I had math. Block B, I had science. That's what I would go to. But then I don't remember that anymore at all. But that was my go-to to to get my mind out of sex so that I could last longer. That's so sad. I know. How sad is that? That's so sad. It really is. 
as I'm like trying to make sure that I'm really concentrating on my genitals so that I can actually feel and something and come back in the day. I do the opposite. Oh my God. That come too quick. <sighs> um, have I thought about somebody else? No. Like obviously when we're having sex, we're very present with each other. I've definitely in moments thought about like having another person with us while we have sex. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. There's been some times and not a person, the thought of having another human, but there's not a face or a person to that human. Okay. The concept of thinking like, what if I had another person here what, with in, us? In what moments in particular? Is it a certain position? Is it a certain action? Or is it just like something you think about sometimes that just pops up in your head? Well, before we did the MMF, that like that was a thing that I had yeah. thought about previously was like, like that's a fantasy for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was definitely one is like, Especially, I think, when you play with my asshole while you're fucking me at the same time. Sometimes I've just, like, in my brain been like, what if that was another dick? Mm. If that makes sense. That makes sense. But there's not, like, a person to it. I don't fantasize about other human beings. It's just the concept of having another human. I don't really have a perfect person for the idealistic situation. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Is he big enough? Yes. Man, like... (laughs) It's so silly because, like, I... we. (laughs) Not just for this this truth or, or drink, but like comments like that get brought up a lot. I know, because everyone's like, oh, you must have a small penis. I can do better for you. Yeah, so so silly. Silly. Yes, it's he's the, definitely big enough. The amount of comments, man. It's just like, oh my God, I'm so, I'm so beyond it. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the other girls think so too. So yeah, no, plenty for me. I got that husband dick, okay? It's true. It's a dick that you want to have forever. But it always hits the right spots. It always hits the right spots, but it doesn't make me fucking not want to fuck you the next day and not be able to walk the next day. I hate that shit, but there's yeah. definitely certain positions that I can make it feel more full. Yeah, for which, sure. Which you can definitely like work around, but I don't know. I still, sometimes you'll like certain positions. I'll have to stop you and be like, whoa, whoa, that's whoa, true. that's too much for me. Nope. I don't like it when it's hitting way up in there cervix fucking oh my god just the other day you're just like i know i'm very biased but i just i really like your penis i do really like your penis (laughs) so funny (laughs) women tell your men that you like their penis for fuck's sakes compliment them tell us the moment that you were the angriest you've ever been with each other and how you felt with it i think the angriest was probably when we first started dating because like when you found out i fucked the other guy i can't remember what it was about but I remember storming out of the house and getting a breather in the cold air. That was what it was. Oh, was that it? Okay. Yes. Um, that was when James had asked me, like, months after we started dating, if I had slept with somebody when I was on a girl's trip, even though I... that was On the, a three-day span. That was the ultimatum, if you guys remember the, like, the ultimatum. That's what that was, so... Yeah, and then, and then like, me being that angry, I, I told myself I would never get that state again because I got that way with like my my first long term relationship with three years on and off where she cheated on me. Mm-hmm. I got that way a lot. I got so mad and angry that when when we got into arguments, I would full on yell while my mom was at the house. Yeah. So she'd come down like, "What the heck is going on?" Mm-hmm. Like I just told myself I would never be that way again. And then my 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 partner after that one, I I wasn't angry, but I was emotionless. Mm-hmm. I was I had no emotions. I, I shut it off completely. And then obviously being with you, like it brought emotions out like more than I wanted. So that when that came out again, I'm like, I, you can never do this again, James. Like, this is what you want to avoid. That, that was my childhood. Mm-hmm. My childhood was coming out of me. My parents argued all the time, screaming constantly. And I told myself I would not be them. Those weren't fun moments. Yeah. So. That was, I think, the only time I've ever seen you yell and punch things. Yep. Because you even punched the fridge that day. Sure, probably. That, that yeah. was like, that was intense. Um, the angriest that I've ever been was definitely when I tried to drive away and like screamed bloody murder at you in the driveway when our friends were just coming over and I didn't even realize they were walking right past us. Mm -hmm. That's definitely when I was the angriest. Yeah, that was, that was definitely the moment where I was like, oh wow, is divorce really a thing? I actually thought we were going to split on that one for sure. That was, that was rough, but that was literally when I, like we were such at opposite spectrums of living. Yeah. And it wasn't our fault. No. Like we were, again, we were so divided because Mm-hmm. I couldn't work with you full time and we couldn't be doing this together. And look how yeah. much has changed since we've been doing this together now. It's, it's even true. better than it's ever been. It was hard living such opposite lives, having such different jobs, being on such different schedules. Mm-hmm. It was really tough. 
I definitely shouldn't have yelled at you like that. And, and you apologize the next day or something like that. You did apologize. It took really, a while, but I really appreciate that because I that in that moment I was like I would never yell at you like that because that's what I told myself. I told myself I would never do that, and to see you do it to me so openly and so long too, I'm just like, who am I to you? What am I to you? Yeah. That's what went through my mind. And it's a oops. Oh, sorry, sandals. Oh, it started um, so easily. It's unfortunate too because like in that moment I was so mad. I wasn't looking at you as my partner. No, I wasn't you looking at you like someone I loved. I, I know you weren't. Like, yeah. That's what happens when you get so angry. You can't yeah. think straight. Mm -hmm. You can't think clearly. So we got through it. Took some time. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Lessons learned. Took us trying to under understand each other's lifestyle as well. And, you know, obviously now we're working together. Things are better than ever. I, do I think that that's necessarily what would work with all couples? Probably not. I actually said the other day, like, it's kind of crazy that we don't hate each other hate each other when we're literally in the same house 24 7 no we enjoy it but then we also have the times where we just do we have the times that we just go in we separate rooms we don't say anything about that but that's what happens when we work at a home like yeah but you know like i know i know other couples say oh we need our time apart but i don't know i don't find that i don't find that with you no it's not like i'm like oh i'm gonna go in this room and i'm like don't bug me for an hour while mm -hmm. i watch my show mm -hmm. well just like you're watching an anime and i'm over here watching something else i don't know if i should say this or not but what? like I'm a little biased about it, but people that feel that way, maybe they're not fully in love with their partner. I don't know. Really? I don't That's know. That's my hot take. That's my hot take. Hmm. Because if I, here's, here's an easy example. A single, a single person, mm -hmm. been single for a while. They are lonely. They really want a partner. They live on their own. But they say, oh yeah, I don't want my partner moving in with me. Like I don't, I don't, I don't want to be with my partner forever. You meet, they meet the right person. All of a sudden they're moving in. All of a sudden you want to be with them all the time. It's because you, because you love them enough. Because you yeah. love them enough for that, right? Okay. That's how I feel about the situation. I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't think it's healthy. Like I do think it's healthy for people that have their own hobbies that are separate from their partner for sure. But I, I get, I get what you're saying also. But I don't I'm know. very biased though, because I'm obviously very much in love with you. So I just I feel like this is so simple to be with you. <laughs> There's moments when I like have a bath by myself and I like my alone time. And I, I and I know you like that. So if we had a bath that was big enough for both of us, I guarantee I would let you join me in the bath too. <laughs> but we don't. We got tiny baths. So <laughs> who's a creator you'd never work with again? Cheers, bitch. Whoever asked me that. Sage. <laughs> His dick was bigger than mine. <laughs> Just kidding, Sage. I love you, man. <laughs> His dick is thick. I'm just like so impressed of how how well like he's obviously just so re well rehearsed and oh fuck my socks. <laughs> and, Are they dirty? And experienced because like oh that guy could just, I just feel like that guy is I mean he's definitely like you said he's definitely a shower. Yeah. But it just seems like he's always kind of hard. Yeah. And he and yeah so I'm like I'm I'm envious of that. <laughs> I'm just not going to answer this question. And that's heated. Uh, I already answered this. How old were you the first time you had sex? 13. Uh, whatever grade 10 was. Was that 16, 17? Yeah. 16? 16. Or 15, 16? 16. 16. Yeah. Was your first time any good? Is it ever good? No. Why ask that question? <laughs> Was your was that person that asked was amazing or something? Like, I don't is know. anyone's first time ever Maybe good? Maybe they haven't had their first time yet. No. No. <laughs> definitely not i mean back in the day if it was yeah sure it was great i had sex for the first time mm. i came mm -hmm. i felt a pussy yes it was magical now fast forward over like you know years <laughs> no of course oh it wasn't goodness. good he keeps startling himself did you did do you know if she came oh she definitely did not mm. i came way too quick <laughs> i've talked about my first time before no it was not good can you handle a BBC? <laughs> I would like, I want to know who asked these questions because men that have a BBC don't call it a BBC. Like black guys don't go out and about and post their, their dick online and like call all their porn BBC porn. It's like a weird fetishy term, honestly. Um, it is kind of low-key getting canceled, I'm not going to lie, but people still ask for it on my site. And so I'm like, okay, fine, here it is. But it's literally just a fucking, 
a black colored dildo and it might be a little thicker than the some of my other ones it's but like labeling all of our videos oh, interracial syc wait what's that small yellow cock oh jesus <laughs> <laughs> i've never heard that i just thought about it oh <laughs> i was like what is that syc small yellow cock fuck um yeah it's a really weird term um can i handle it i mean i can handle the dildos but they're nice and soft and squishy um and i've only ever been with i've only ever had sex with i think one black guy uh it wasn't great sex and he couldn't keep it erect so i also can't tell you if i can handle it or not i don't know if it's super long probs not because i'm short in in but super girthy too would you prefer girth over length i would prefer girth over length for okay. sure for sure lengthy dicks are not my cup of tea i'd much rather girth just saying give me the chodes <laughs> haven't heard that term in a long time what's the worst lay you've ever had professionally oh professionally i've had worse lays in my personal life than than professionally i'm talking think, about professionally right now i don't even think i have a, a i don't think i have one professionally I don't think I've had a bad ex like I don't have like, I only got a, one that could deem the worst lay you know okay so drink because that's lame that's the truth <laughs> worst lay you've had non-professionally okay so yeah just like so silent not talking especially when like she was on top of me lots. So she was fucking me. Hmm. And usually when the girl's fucking you, they, yeah. they're making some noise, right? And you're working hard too. Yeah. Like there's like Zero. some panting. Zero. I can't even hear her breathe. It just seems so unenjoyable for her. Was she but like, looking at you? Like, uh, was there any eye contact? Was there any... Like, I don't, actually, no. That, I mean, we didn't have sex. We didn't have sex often, which is, that's the reason why. But I don't recall it ever being like... we. Was this a girlfriend? No. Oh. It was just... Uh, I don't even recall it being very bright. Like, I don't think the lights were ever like super on. Interesting. Yeah. And then there's a girl that um, just reeked of cigarettes. Ew. And mm -mm. we we didn't actually have full full on intercourse, but I just I just couldn't. Like it was just. Oh man, the smell of smoke. Yeah. Kissing kissing that. Oh yeah. It's pretty gross. It is. Um, my worst, honestly, that's really hard for me to say. There's a couple. Uh, there's quite a few actually. <laughs> One I would have really liked to have happened was really into this guy. Poor motherfucker was so nervous he could not get it up, but was like persistent on trying for like, I want to say two fucking hours. Two hours? I was so over it. I was like- Why were you with someone for two hours? Were you hanging out with, like, was it a planned, was it a planned thing that you're hanging out with I him? I actually think, that, yeah, like we were, we were hanging two out. Two hours is a long time. Yeah. And it was a lot of- me fluffing and then trying to put it in and then as soon as it was going in it was like getting soft again and so i was trying to be like okay like let's just not like let's just do this another time and we were like low-key kind of dating mm. uh and he was just like there was there was people there too like i think it was kind of a bit of a party not really but like there was always this one friend's house that we would always be at and his parents were never home so it was at this house and so i think he just it was going to be his first time mm. so i think he was just really persistent on like wanting to like exit and be able to tell his friends how great it was so i think he just felt bad and didn't want to like leave the room being like oh i couldn't get my dick hard it's crazy the past two experiences you said that the both guys couldn't get a hard yeah yeah it happens a lot and they yeah the other time with the monkey guy the mm -hmm. monkey guy couldn't get it hard hmm. but he was also making monkey sounds at me and groping my titties and being weird as fuck man that's fucking wild i mean i'm <sighs> I can't, I, I don't know what that feels like per, on, a, on a personal sex level. Uh, from what I've heard from friends, you mentioning like, yeah, like when you're flirting with the girl, that you're touching the girl, like, like that, that whole steepy part, fully hard. Yeah. As soon as the sex act begins, completely limp. Like nerves kick in. And I'm just like, wow, it's crazy. Cause like, I understand the feeling of like being really hard in that flirty kind of phase. Yeah. But I'm always there. So like I don't I that's crazy to me that you've had so many experiences. It's happened a lot in my yeah wild lifetime and like of course as a as a as a woman and like when you when you don't grow up talking about these things, the guy obviously is embarrassed. The girl's also embarrassed because she's like oh fuck what's wrong like what's wrong with me? Do I not turn you on? Do like does it not feel good? Like what am I doing wrong? And like obviously when you're that young too like keep in keep in mind I was 
we're in our teenage years or like, you know, up to like 19, you're not talking to each other being like, what can I do to help? Or like, you know, both how, parties, how can feel, I... both parties feel at fault Yeah, and it's an awkward situation to talk about. Yes. So yeah. And then there was one guy that I actually also really, really liked. And unfortunately he had what I would consider a borderline micro penis. Of course, you know, I, I did my best to <laughs> try with that one, but it didn't do anything. So, man, I can't believe just even beyond the sex industry. I can't believe how many penises you've seen. <laughs> like you've seen so many penises, <laughs> even when you were doing uh, hair removal, like laser hair removal. Yeah. Uh, and now, obviously, in the sex industry, too, like, man, the amount of penises you've seen. Then I'll always be like, oh, yeah, but then you really like my penis. So, like, I do really that feels like good. Your penis. Out of the thousands of penises you've seen, <laughs> and I'm at the top, <laughs> that's a good flow chart. <laughs> I've had my fair share. I have. But, uh, yeah, those are probably my top worsts, I guess. But, felt bad for the guy with the micro penis. Definitely really liked him, but it wasn't going to work for me. I'm so sorry. I'm sure he's found someone that's into it. Probably. Hopefully. He's a great guy. Do either of you have cuckold fantasies? Uh, I wouldn't say so. Okay. So I'm still... Cuckold is literally like me getting fucked by somebody else and you watching. And me being into that. Or I guess you into that too. But I think it's more in the sense of me. It has to be the guy? No, not the guy, but the one watching. Okay. Has think, to be into it. I think... I mean, but obviously you'd be into it too. But I think the... The act of cuckolding mm -hmm. would be in that sense. The person watching is typically more fantasized about it. Like, okay. I want to see my partner have see sex. My partner have sex. Yeah, so you could be watching too, but I could be fucking the girl, but mm -hmm. you'd be really into that. I think out of the two of us, I'm probably more the cuck than you. But, oh, 100%. Yeah. Definitely. A lot of things don't like turn me on or off. Or, no, lots of things turn me off. <laughs> Not a lot of things turn me on extra, I find. But uh. I also know my own brain, but like, what I feel is normal that turns me on is just normal in my head mm -hmm. when I thought about this recently too but like but yeah that seems like like edge play I really enjoy edging mm -hmm. in my mind it's normal in my mind every guy should enjoy that yeah. but like that's just a, that could be just a me thing right yeah. but I feel like there's not many things that arouse me more than at my my baseline I don't I feel like I don't have much but like yeah. you always say like oh when you maybe when I watch you fuck another girl and record you like it might turn me on like that doesn't that doesn't do anything for me Hmm. any more or less very neutral lots of the situations very neutral yeah interesting we're still learning about ourselves obviously mm -hmm. learning new kinks well who knows maybe i will like to get slapped more or some shit like we joked around because we're, we're, we're going to shambhala this year and we're hopefully having lots of our friends come with us and i, I and a handful of sex worker friends and i was just like you know we're gonna have a sex worker camp yeah and i'm just like hopefully we get a picture where you know like i have all you guys on leashes and like all five of you guys on leashes and whatever and then you're just like no we'd have all you on a leash well you know? we would have all the girls with leashes hooked on, up to one collar on, on James. me i'm just like oh I'd, I'd want that that's way that that that's so much hotter that's so much hotter <laughs> that's so much hotter in my Bunch of hot bitches just walking oh yeah that's walking hot james around that's hot so i'm like oh maybe i'm a little subby <laughs> <laughs> which honestly like i'm not i don't want to say like i'm not, not surprised. surprised but like clearly yeah i know personality wise it makes a little bit of sense sure it does what's your biggest sexual regret biggest sexual regret i don't think i have one yeah but i feel like you already said yours a while ago oh yeah for sure so. um I'm trying to think of have another one hmm. i haven't had many sexual experiences to have a big sexual regret and i don't really feel lots of regrets to begin with so don't have a lot of regrets done a lot of crazy shit plus yeah. sex for you is very especially back in the day and everything was very non-committal uh -huh. like you don't sex for you was valued extremely high so i feel like yeah. you wouldn't have any regrets because of that sex was you so casual yeah i'm trying to think if like there was a person that i did that i regret doing or you know something like that but i don't i don't really think so i mean there's a lot of people i probably shouldn't have given myself to but like do i regret it no it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I also somehow got away scotch-free with no pregnancies and no STDs until my adult life. So, like, that's pretty good, <laughs> I would say. I mean, the the odds are in your favor. 
what do you mean we said it before when you're young there aren't any oh. stds around yeah, yeah, yeah. so the odds are in your favor not the pregnancy thing though that's there's true. a lot of people that just get knocked up especially when you're young i mean everyone's probably shooting blanks at 13 <laughs> Okay, well, I wasn't just having <laughs> sex at 13. Jeez. That's just when it started. Uh, what's the weirdest rumor you've heard about yourself? I don't... I don't... That's What a silly question. I don't, I don't I hear any rumors about myself. Um, mine is definitely just, like, people randomly assuming that I'm pregnant, which happened. But, like, it happened a lot. There was quite a few people that were like, oh, my God, are you pregnant? Or somebody said something about, like, my kids once in a comment and i was like what are we what are we talking about sometimes i think that people are getting confused between me and another creator but i could be wrong i don't know but i'm like i don't know how you think that i have kids or that i'm pregnant that's no even if i was ever pregnant i would probably never actually announce it because i would just like you know so why would i announce it just to have the world mad at me that'd be silly <laughs> anyway we should drink because i was stupid <laughs> What is your ultimate sexual fantasy and have you ever told anyone? I don't have an ultimate sexual fantasy. Maybe back in the day, I'd really want a girl to edge me and you basically did that for me. You never even told me that's what you were into. I it thought just that was gradually... a normal thing. I didn't even know that was a thing. Again, like I, like I literally just said, I thought that every man would like to prolong their, their mm -hmm. orgasm. Mm -hmm. I thought that's normal. Hmm. <laughs> so, Yeah. I I do like like massage sex. Mm -hmm. I like that, but we've done that too. Guys, I don't even know if I've told them. Can I say this? I think you can. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Damn it. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Fuck! That was so hot. <laughs> I lost my duck. Now I'll never know. Are we leaving that part in at least? Yeah, I'll leave that in, of course. Oh my goodness. Um, oh, I have to answer it. What's your ultimate sexual fantasy and have you ever told anyone? I'm... MMF is probably your ultimate one, right? Because <sighs> that's, that's something, especially back then, that you would not have even thought about happening. MMF, but also I, I would have to say gangbang. It's still your fantasy though? Um, you keep... You're like, know, all, you're, I'm, you're, I'm, you're like on I'm the fence I'm hesitant now. just because I've heard about like the reality of it not being good. And but, I think every girl says the same thing they say if it's a handful of picked gentlemen yeah then yeah any day if take i can right? pick the 10 guys if you give me like all the pictures and i get to pick you know 10 out of the 50 that are available i'd be happy with that and not even that like you know like as soon as we work with more people like if we just choose like yeah a bunch of co-workers exactly that we've worked with that you know that we'll I be fine i just don't want like a big group of 50 year old dads with dad bods mm -hmm. and like you know tiny chodes we literally we, we literally talked about that when all when when the three of them were here we're like mm -hmm. man if we ever had a time or we can do group gang bangs yeah we're, we're like all these males are comfortable with each other yeah fuck it we'll spend one time one girl like we just and bust it out mm -hmm. it'll be quite the scene It'd be so hot yeah yeah my my i mean mmf uh, gang bang but also like you know um cnc but like major like probably like a major cnc scene where i were to consent prior and then have it be like reenacted as if it wasn't consented during which is crazy and i realize that's probably due to trauma but that is definitely like a big fantasy everything is due to trauma i know Let's and that's why that like clear. i really liked the bunk bed scene because i was the one that was stuck under the bunk bed and i really liked i would definitely i said it to you after the fight i would have to fuck you in that position more because it does feel like you it does feel like you're not a lot to i know this. and i do like being on the opposing side of that mm. i do okay so no we just gotta play with it more sure i was st totally stuck under the bunk bed and you know the boys had to like fuck, fuck you fuck out. me free mm -hmm. i couldn't even tell who well, i mean i could tell but like <laughs> you know i couldn't even see who was fucking me they were just you know fucking me while Using i was stuck you. under the bed and yeah. it was so goddamn hot mm -hmm. um but obviously we consented to everything prior but during it happening i was like <gasps> oh oh god that's such a good one honestly i know i, I obviously spent a lot of time editing that one especially recently mm -hmm. so that one's really stuck in my head but all the improv and all the acting and everyone did so good acting up even you like uh, maybe if you take my clothes off it'll help <laughs> and then sage is pulling you off like oh oh like don't do that kind of thing oh i didn't know your friend was clean shaven <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> There's three whole ass minutes of just the fucking intro and it's great. 
that's how you know we we're all we've all done this yes no 100 percent. everyone was comfy with it's, each other it's like it, it, yeah the whole, it feels like a full-ass porno uh-huh. the whole thing does well, it is it was. <laughs> well i know it is but like if we're talking about mainstream it feels right. like a it feels mainstream like when you would produced. watch on pornhub yes yeah mainstream produced totes <laughs> um have you ever self-pleasured with your less dominant hand yes absolutely not i have does feels it, different does it well one i don't like jackhammering no i like caressing the tip of my penis uh-huh. but left hand because of the, the webbing yeah. the webbing is on yeah. the other side feel, it makes it feel different immediately mm. and do you do it often or just no no just i just had a curiosity probably yeah just out of curiosity i say probably would have recorded that video but i don't think i did i don't think i actually did in that video huh. um but uh just like just just to change up to see if sensations feel different mm-hmm. but it's not as it's not as easy and not as fun <laughs> i'm very particular and when i use my hands i definitely need to be doing a certain clockwise circular motion and my left hand is really incapable that would not work for me so i'll use my left hand to finger myself and my right hand on my clip but my right hand will always be for my clip weirdest place you've ever masturbated hmm. i literally was talking about this with you this morning i don't know that they're weird per se I've masturbated while driving. Danger. Um, probably just like outside. In nature. Uh, just like outside, yeah. Just because I'm just like. Oh. In the public. No, not in the public. Okay. Um, but yeah, just outside because I'm like, oh, I can just come and that's it. Just leave it out there. <laughs> that's easy. That's true. <laughs> See, it's funny because women don't have to think about that. We don't nope. have to think about where we leave the messes. Nope. Um, yeah, I don't know. Driving. It was a big one for me for for quite a while to like go to the gym and I would shower and get ready for work right from there. And so it would be like oh, after the that. gym in the shower. Something up it's it's very much for me like after I've worked out enough and when I'm clean is when I'm definitely the the horniest. Not first thing in the morning and not right at night. It's like right after exercising. But I must be clean. So it's a really awkward time of day to decide to be the most horniest. It's the worst time of day to be the most horniest. <laughs> well, when we especially with your level of cleanliness. When we worked opposite schedules, it was very difficult. Now that we work at the same schedule, it's not that difficult. So, you, yeah, you told me that for the first time today. I'm like, damn, that's hot. Yeah. <laughs> you, are you just, are you just you just talking about masturbating anymore? Like you never would and never did. Well. Before a masturbation video that came out. Um, Cause it's scary. <laughs> Where am I? If Johnny Sins wanted to work with you, would you? Dude, if Johnny Sins wanted to work with me? Hell yeah. <laughs> Can you hit Johnny Sins fucking... I mean, I don't know what we do. DP me? Jesus Christ. Uh, for me specifically. Oh. But I, when, when Sage was here, his fucking partner was, was literally working with Johnny Sins. I know. Sins. I was actually, actually going to ask you when we go to LAX. I'm pretty sure that's where he is. Mm. But yeah, Should I, I, I just fucking I, I reach out said, to Johnny Sins? Who wouldn't? work with johnny i Sims. know he seems like such a kind gentleman too he, he does so yeah work i remember when i was growing up i told you this too I, he, he released a video of how to like last longer mm. and i and he was really nice about it and gave us all of his tips and stuff and i'm like oh i'll, I'll keep that in mind but yeah if, if johnny says want to work with you or you want to do you do it yeah. i'll fucking watch i'll record <laughs> i'll be the cameraman <laughs> fuck of course um it's funny because i'm really not into the pale skinned blonde blue eyed guys but maybe it's because he's bald yeah, you can't tell he's blonde. Can't tell he's blonde. <laughs> he's just pale and blue-eyed. He could have any color hair for all I know. I'm sure it is blonde. It is blonde, isn't it? I don't, I, I don't know. I've, all, I've only known bald. him as bald, but <laughs> it's know. um, yeah, because when we were when we were here with Sate when Sater's over uh, and his partner was working with Johnny, um, the man himself, he was t- saying how he's trying to work with more like alt-looking girls or just like getting away from um, getting away from mainstream mainstream porn, which is like. Well, cool. cool. Fuck, Good. the timing is perfect now. Which yeah. I feel like lots of mainstream male porn stars are doing, ironically. Like, yeah, well, now that they've all built a away. name for themselves and they realize they can make more money doing it on their own. Yeah, totally. You know, like, mainstream's great to get your name out there and to get big, but, you know, you're only making money for as long as you're filming pornos. If you're getting paid $1,000 per video that you're making, you're only getting that $1,000 once. You better keep fucking on camera, right? Like, Whereas yeah, at that point, like Johnny, for example, he has two cameras. He, he records all of his film himself. He sets one camera up. It looks very amateurish, but you're Johnny fucking Sins. You're Johnny you can Sins. You put whatever you want out. It doesn't yeah. matter. 
So, yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll reach out to him when we're down there and see if uh, you could film for us. I mean, I don't, uh, he, I don't know if he would. He seems to really like filming. When I was, when because Sage set, I don't know if you saw, Sage's partner sent um, some of the scenes onto mm-hmm. his phones. I watched some of the scenes of Johnny fucking his partner. And, um, yeah, very, I mean, it looks very amateurish, but like, what do you expect, though, right? Like, mm-hmm. he's setting him up himself. He's using his phone. I don't know if I saw those ones in particular, but I have seen some of his recent stuff, and I definitely think he could do with a cameraman. Yeah, he could. That's just more money, though. He had to pay someone else. Yeah, but if it was you, we wouldn't have to pay you. That's true. <laughs> Man, it would be, be, be a flashback back to the mainstream porn days for him, because it would look super professional. Uh-huh. And, yeah. Totes. <laughs> That'd be cool, actually. Um, who has more expensive toys? Cars, jets, skis, jets. Jesus Christ. Um, uh, probably just say you. That's probably easier because you're just because your truck. truck. We both have new motorcycles. new motorcycles. We both have brand new ski and snowboard. Yeah, I mean, equipment. I have. I spent money on the gear and stuff, but I don't think that adds up to the point of your truck. Yeah, I just have a newer truck, but. I think it is just the truck that adds. It's that. just the truck. Otherwise, we but I did. The same. I did fucking buy a whole new monitor and keyboard yeah. and set up just for the editing process and. But that's for work. Yeah, so. but still, still, still toys or whatever. This is such a weird question. Who the fuck? Who has slept with the young with the youngest person? Well, I mean, I was thirteen and he was thirteen, you so I'm probably gonna win that one. Yeah. Cheers to whoever creepily asked that question. I guess mine was sixteen. You're a creep. Oh my goodness. Would you ever have sex with a little person? Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> like, people are so weird. What's the most unusual or most daring place you've ever had sex? Probably Dirt Pile. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys remember, I called her Dirt Pile Girl earlier. She's cause... great. I, I mean, we still, we still, we're still connected on Facebook and stuff. And she. It's because you fucked her in a dirt pile. Okay, so I met her at a nightclub. <laughs> well, I didn't even meet her at the nightclub. Me and my buddy were going to a nightclub. And before we even went in, her her friend and, one, and a guy friend walked out, and I'm just like, "Is it not good in there or what?" They're like, "No, it's not." Like, you want to walk to the, the other one with us? So they, they walked with us and we spent the whole night together, got her number. And then the next day or the or the following day, maybe two days later, um, they're going out again. They're only here for the week because they're here for a dance competition. Mm-hmm. And they're staying at a hotel. And we decided to, like, um, go to the hotel, like, walk to the club again and then walk back. But when we came back, her friend was, like, wanting to have sex with that other dude. So we left and then uh, she was in their room in the in their room uh, so she was super horny uh, and little intoxicated i was not i drove mm. um she really wanted to have sex so we just walked around the block and there was this construction zone so we went through the construction zone and she just bent over and she wanted me to fuck her so i fucked her and uh so I fucked i'm her. just like where do you want me to come and and she's like yeah just come on my back i'm like there's no way i can I'm not doing that. I, I didn't say this out loud, but there's no way I can just come on your back and have you just have that all over you. For the so rest I didn't of the come. Night. I didn't come. Really? No, didn't come. Why didn't you just come in the dirt pile? I don't know. I just, <laughs> did the, that thought didn't come to mind. The only thought that came to mind was there's gotta, no way I can come on you. <laughs> just come in the dirt. Didn't think about it. I really didn't. I just didn't come. I just didn't. Plus she was a little intoxicated too. And I felt kind of off about that. Um, even though I knew she was really into me and everything like that. So hmm. yeah, that was That's that experience. One. Mm-hmm. The weirdest place. I don't know. I've had a lot of like random outdoor sex. I was at a house party once and there was, it was on a farm and I like ran away and went and fucked inside the tractor, like an actual big farm tractor. That was interesting. I don't know. Oh, we fucked at the college bathroom Yeah. during college. Yeah. So that was pretty crazy. I think public sex is exciting. So do I. When I first had my other partners, I I wanted to make a vow like every time we go to a restaurant, we're having sex in the washroom oh, or geez. something. Never did. Uh, but that does entice me. Hmm. Yeah, bathrooms don't really entice me that much. It's not bathroom. I mean, make public. Just like yeah. Public. Yeah. Even like um when when we would. Uh, like have sex at Airbnbs and the balconies right there. Or, oh yeah, I love even, that shit. Or even on the balcony, and I used to like really worry about stuff like that. Mm. 
because it always when you're especially when you're in the condos like big 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 condos apartments or whatever and and you always it always seems like everyone can see you but the mm-hmm. reality is you're you're a tiny speck even if you're across from another building you're a tiny yeah. speck well, and even if people do see you they can't see it close up no. they're just seeing it from afar yeah exactly so and like that's your problem fuck? for being a peeper and yeah, like i don't mind putting on a show that's yeah, cool totally so i've totally gotten more open that is that. my one of my favorites when it we is. fuck on patios yeah, when we're at airbnbs i love that. that shit it is exciting for it sure is. <laughs> I am also very much like a rule follower. I don't like getting in trouble. So like the concept of getting like kicked out of somewhere, I don't really like that. Mm. I don't really want to like ruin the chances of being able to go to the same restaurant again if sure. I really like that restaurant. Like I don't really want to do that. Also because maybe because I was in the restaurant industry for so long, I fucking hated that shit. I hated when I could catch two people in the washroom stall and they're holding up the line and I have to like bang on the door and you could mm. tell that they're giggling in there. I hate that shit. Um but yeah, like outside is in like, you know, going for a hike and like people could walk by. I like that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. The hammock was nice in Mexico. Oh, that was great. I, th- I think that's the first time I had sex was, I wasn't on the hammock, but you were on the hammock, but it was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that video You're just is a, swinging that, right on my dick. That video is available, by the way. <laughs> yeah. That but was that good. was also that was also a visible patio too like the people that were walking by on the other there, side. There was a bridge, a suspension bridge. Yeah. There was a little river you could like swim by. Don't look on my patio then. Jeez. Oh, I miss Mexico. Oh, same. We'll figure it out. Mm, have you ever gone down on someone and been absolutely appalled? Explain. I don't think so. But again, like I said, I can't even remember going down on anyone else other than you at this point. Mm. I don't even remember going down on, on other on other girls. Um. So I have both with men and women for sure. I've definitely experienced the like stinky dick thing which sucks but like my trick to the stinky dick is if you're in the in the if you're in the moment and you don't want to like you know embarrass them then you just like really get a lot of saliva and like get it on there and then use your hand for a minute and then put your mouth back on it because you kind of just like clean it away clean it a a little bit with your hand and i do the same with vaginas actually i'll just like spit on my hand and like use my hand a little bit to get like if people have like lint or like fuzzies hate that shit but it does happen but there's actually been a couple women and like no shade to them i can taste when someone is like stoned at the time or like a big time stoner i swear that i can taste it in vaginas not dicks but vaginas um so i've tasted that before and then also when people vape a lot it's a very interesting taste it's like the same taste as you know when you kiss them after they've smoked a vapor smoked some weed i don't know if anyone's gonna relate to this It's like I can taste that on their pussy. And so it's not necessarily appalling, but it's definitely not my favorite. So I think one thing that shocked me and I said this to you the other day was like when you go when I go down on a girl and they literally taste like nothing. Like they don't even have like a human Mm. taste that 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 shocks me a little bit. Is that not me, though? Because I feel like I clean myself to the point of... So when you just clean yourself, yeah. like when you just overly clean yourself and we, we film a scene or we get, in, we get uh-huh. into bed or whatever, even even on some other girls we worked with, and I go down on them and I literally taste like nothing, that surprises me because I, I still expect it to at least taste like pussy. Hmm. <laughs> so that's a bit of a shock. But Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Every vagina tastes so different, mm-hmm. too. Like... So, but I don't know. I don't think I've, especially in the work industry, like most of everybody's pretty, pretty good at just being clean to the most degree. Yep. At least the people that we've worked with. Yeah. Once in a while there's a fuzzy, but like it's no well, you one's fault. Yeah. You can't help it. Exactly. You can wipe yourself all you want. You put clothes back on for a hot second. You take mm-hmm. them off. Boom. You got fuzzies on your genitals. So you just deal with it as you can. Oh, I'm finally going to be free. Love you, dude. But damn, I'm in pain. What's the most shallow reason you've rejected someone? Um, I think the only thing I can really say is that I was not ready for a committed relationship. It's not shallow. Oh, that's as shallow as I get. Drink, that's stupid. I'm, I'm deep. <laughs> mm. I felt shallow when I was doing that, though, that's for sure. What's the most shallow reason I've rejected someone? See, I, I feel like I should be able to answer this, but my brain honestly can't think. Like, I can't. I can't think. So. I've also not really been put in a position much for rejecting someone. 
versus you probably rejected lots of people. Yeah, I definitely, I have to the point where like I don't recall maybe why I've rejected people. Probably just like physical attraction, I guess. Yeah. You know, is that shallow or is that just normal? I think uh, it's relatively normal. Mm-hmm. Can you orgasm without clitoral stimulation? I can, but like mm, 0.7% of the time. I think it's only happened me. Like I can only recall it happening maybe twice. Uh, and I don't know why it happened. So, but typically, no, I definitely need clitoral stimulation. There's been times where we've had sex and you're just like, wow. Yeah, that definitely felt like a different type of orgasm than mm-hmm. the clitoral one. I can tell the difference between when I'm having a clitoral orgasm versus a G-spot orgasm. But I can still achieve a G-spot orgasm with clitoral stimulation. Like, I can feel the difference. Um, I think maybe I could achieve it without clitoral stimulation, like, if there was ass play involved. Probably. Um, but, yeah, it would have to be, like, deep penetrative very rhythmic for that to occur if that makes sense what's the most shameful porn you've ever watched i I, I literally can't think of anything really no Mm, i have definitely watched uh hentai is that what it's called oh really i have never even oh my god it's stupid hot well everything's fucking drawn and shit you can draw whatever you want yeah so like i really it's so weird i don't know what the fuck it's about but like the ones that are like it plays into the whole cnc thing for sure but it's like the big old monsters that have like fucking tentacles or like some of the monsters are like these huge monsters that have like massive dicks and they're just fucking obliterating these women (sighs) it's pretty shameful and tentacle porn for sure like when the women are being like hung up with ropes and like the tentacles are like going in all their holes it's funny because you're literally just talking about your one dildo today my monster dildo yeah i've got a weird thing for the monster dildos and i have an octopus one and i kind of want to get one of the ones that like lays an egg inside of me because i got the fucking wait what did you call it the kink i have breeding it's not though i said that's why i said you agreed but Right. It's not a breeding kink. I have like a... Put your seed inside me kink without producing a baby. I don't know. I don't know how to explain that. But yeah. (laughs) That's probably the most shameful porn I've ever watched. You've never watched anything shameful? I don't think so. (laughs) I I can't. I literally can't think of anything on the top of my head. Um, do you see yourselves in this industry until you're old? Uh, this is really funny because like we were hanging out with some friends the other day, just yeah, the other day. And he was saying how like he doesn't envision himself beyond like 50 or 60 or whatever, like age wise, like physically. And I'd agree. I don't either, but not even 50. I don't think of myself when I'm 50. I don't think about that at all. No. Stuff like that at all. No. I don't. I think about the present. I think about the now, what I'm doing now. Um, and so what, so if, if this industry works out for us, then maybe we will, who knows? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's working right now. We're just doing it right now. Yeah. I don't think that long term. So if I'm still hot, maybe I'll like debut a couple granny pornos. I don't know. Why not? If I'm still hot, then why not? Exactly. Mm, what's one thing that you would never do in bed? Well, I don't want to say never. I'm always, I always feel like <laughs> you, you should always try something once. Mm-hmm. At this point in time, I could probably say pegging. But only because like, we've done butt stuff and I just don't have any like want for that. So I'm just like, eh. Intentional poop play. Intentional poop play. Mm-mm. No, thank you. No part of that is sexy or turns me on whatsoever. Also, the smell, I'd be fucking gagging. <laughs> oh my god. No. Uh, what is each of yours weirdest or craziest kinks? Well, we've already kind of discussed that, I think. 
We've already discussed it, so let's drink because that's stupid. And I shouldn't have put that in there twice. Which person belongs to which cat and why? Well, shorts is definitely James. Sandals, I think, is a good mixture of both of us. And Dookie's me. I think both of the boys are a good mixture of both of us. There's definitely times where it feels like sandals crawl onto me a lot. But I can say the same thing about you. And there's times where I see socks like crawling up on you, but also crawling up on me. Mm. I think they're quite split, to be okay, honest. Okay, so the boys are split and shorts is definitely James. Yeah. <laughs> shorts and I have like a love-hate sister relationship, so. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. But like that's her daddy. But like her and I are love-hate sisters. Look at her being all cute for him. Fucking slut. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't pester her and she holds grudges she does her and i both hold grudges for sure it's just so funny how how similar like i always say how similar you two <laughs> are and that's why she loves me and i'm i'm you know i'm her daddy and her daddy too <laughs> daddy whatever daddy says have you ever had to do a sex scene with anyone that you were not into and didn't like if so how do you cope i mean two degrees yes but just because I don't like, well, is it not like or not into or both? Sex scene that you, with anyone that you were not into and didn't like. Uh, I don't like, I don't often don't like people. I don't often dislike people. And I feel like if I dislike you, I probably wouldn't work with you. You won't, yeah. Um. So the whole like the dislike can be thrown out of there. Okay. The, the not into part is more realistic, right. in my opinion. Because Jess, there's definitely times where I'm not fully into the girl. Mm -hmm. And I guess the only thing that I have to cope with is staying hard. Right. So how do I cope with that? I don't know. Don't fuck her for long and change scenes. <laughs> like, What else can you do, really? How do I cope with that? I pop a pill. <laughs> that too. So... <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's I think that's I think that's just the reality of it. I've had a fair share myself, but I just drank, so I don't have to talk about it. Mostly women though. It's women. But you've also mostly had experiences with women. Women are the drama. <laughs> yeah. I mean some men too, but Yeah. Locked in a cabin for a year. No phone, no internet. Could you do it for a million bucks? Oh, yeah. One year for a million? No phone, no what? No phone, no internet. No phone, no internet. So the only issue with that is a million seems too little for that. Exactly. Especially with, you know, where the climate is present day. I don't think a million would get us a lot, but I think I would still do it. I think that'd be easy. That'd be like full on just meditating for a year. <laughs> Go out in the middle of the woods, cabin. Do we have to hunt for stuff? I don't know. Is food supplied? It doesn't say that. If, if the only thing that's not there is my phone and, and whatever it is, Wi-Fi, I'd, I'd do it easy. So here's my thing. My answer would have been yes. If somebody can keep what we have going now afloat. If it means putting this that we have going on right now on like halt and it like loses all progression, I wouldn't do it. Um... If you would have asked me that like a couple years ago before we were doing this, but I was before just like, jobs were, are before internet? jobs are this, yeah, yeah I would have hundred percent been like, absolutely. But you know, that would stop all of our growth that we have right now and all of our progression. So I would say no now. Um, what if, what if you could go and do it for a million dollars and you can keep it going and I can keep it going, but, but we have no contact for that year. I could do it. I think I could do it. That'd be fucking sad, but I could do it. Yeah, I mean, you'd still be working fucking other people, so. <laughs> That's, that wouldn't, that wouldn't make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> we may feel, make Who's you feel a less Who's to say I can't lonely? send some girls up to the cabin for you? I guess you're right. <laughs> I, guess, I don't I know guess what you're all right. the rules of this question are, but uh, yeah, no, that would suck. But if I could keep what we have going afloat. And he could go do that. I could keep making the money that we're making and he could go make a million and then come back to our lives together. It would be really sad, but I think we could. We could literally like buy our house, our dream house with that. Yep. But 
I don't know. I wouldn't be able to do it without you. I wouldn't be able to do this job without you. You do all the fucking nitty gritty shit. I'd be so dumb. <laughs> I'm just the hot bod. I'm nothing else. Jesus. I'm a little bit funny, but like other give than yourself, that, that's give it. Give yourself more credit. <laughs> I don't know how to set this shit up. We were trying to set this fucking podcast up and he was having a hard time and I was like, how can I help you? Even knowing that I literally can't help you. I don't, I don't know anything. It's okay. First thought that entered your mind when you saw the other for the first time. What, when was that first moment I saw you? I think my first thoughts were, please fuck me or something close. I'm having a hard time. College. Because... Like again, when when I saw you, I saw a lot of new girls. Uh huh. Because you your class specifically had a lot of younger girls mm-hmm. in the class, so I saw a handful of you guys. I'm just like, okay, I'll, I mean, like we had a decent amount of good looking ones too. Yeah, so I'm just like, oh, you're cute, you're cute, you're hot, whatever. That I think that was all that went through my mind. Mm. I definitely thought he was hot right off the hop. Okay, so these ones are came off Facebook, and they're like just like we're on the last page. Would you look at that? Um, these ones are, some of them are kind of boomer questions. <laughs> what animal would you be? <laughs> I'd be a lion. That's it? Yeah. Hmm. I always, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. In grade three, I did a, <laughs> in grade three, I did a project. Everyone had to choose an animal to research and like write about like, like then present it yeah. i chose prairie dog for some reason stop so i always like resort to prairie dog <laughs> one of the stupidest animals. i know right <laughs> so i don't know why though and uh but i don't put much thought into that i guess so james would be a prairie dog and i would be the lion that would fucking eat him sure yes sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's so sad you don't have a better answer than that no i don't i don't think about stuff like that Fuck. I wouldn't even know. I'm trying to think. Maybe maybe a bird so I can fly. Some type of bird. Okay. Um, That's better than a prairie dog. <laughs> I guess. Fuck me. I, I, I guess I, I would have to choose like a top dog bird. I guess one of the top dog birds, what, what eagles? I guess eagle, bald eagles are a pretty top dog. For for our region, yes. Yeah, so. Okay. Probably what I'll I'd do. take bald eagle over a prairie dog. Fuck. Okay. Uh, yeah, mine would easily be a lion. I want to be eaten by lions. Have I talked about this on the podcast? Uh, on the podcast? I don't know. I'm talking about it a lot lately. I think you talked about the podcast. Yeah, I think you did because I think you talked about like being reincarnated and stuff like that. But I want to die via being killed by big cats. Preferably lions, but I'll take tigers. I would honestly even take a cougar in the woods if I was on a hike. Uh, but I would like it to be like African big cats that maul me to death because I firmly believe that I will be reincarnated into one of them. Do you believe in reincarnation? Yes. Fully? Yes. Okay. I don't talk about it a lot because I know it's very like, like I don't have a reason to believe it. I don't have a reason to understand it. There's no science that points to that being evidence whatsoever. It's just something you want to believe in. It's something that I want to believe in. and okay. That's fine. You know, I just, I have this like weird gut feeling that when my Gigi, my great grandma died, that she turned into a bird. Mm -hmm. And so every once in a while I get like a bird that comes really close to me and I just can't help but feel like it's her. And then I think that my grandma turned into a wolf. She always wanted to be a wolf. That's what this tattoo on my wrist is for. Um, So yeah, I think I'm going to be a lion. I don't know. I have no other belief when it comes to death, but I also don't think that I'm going to be myself as a lion. I just think that I will turn into a lion, but I won't have memories of being me. If that makes sense. I mean, that makes sense. Okay. Deserted island, three things, what would you bring? Man, where, where are you guys getting these questions out of like the, the fucking they, ask 100 questions textbook? This last shit? page of questions is the boomers on Facebook. So like, I, I, I don't even care about answering this question. Okay, then just drink. <laughs> I'll drink. <laughs> Fuck. Deserted island, three things, what would they be? Hmm. Um. Three things, you and probably two other girls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like. I don't fucking know, man. Um, James, my cat, and some cat food, so the cat can live and we can die. I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> my answer was better. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> fuck like rabbits and then die. That's great. Spirit animal and why? I mean, it's basically what I just said. So, prairie dog. <laughs> <laughs> lame 
the funny thing is, I can't even pull out any facts right now. You know, they're really community driven species. They really, I don't fucking know. Like, I couldn't even. Grade three, man. Why did I choose Paradox? start calling you fucking Timon. <laughs> so silly. Zombie apocalypse. Who's fighting and running? You're not fighting or running. You're dying. I'm dying. <laughs> I think I'd run. I think I'd fight for as long as I could, but that's it. I've talked about this quite a few times. I don't think I've talked about it on here, but like if the zombie apocalypse is actually happening and like the world is ending, I don't want to fight. I would like to be killed. I would like you to kill me or a zombie to bite me so I can join them. I don't care. I mean, I couldn't care. kill you if that situation was for I know. real. I couldn't I know you kill would. you. That's fine. I'll just turn into a zombie and then you'll have to kill me because I'll try to kill you. So sure, sure. That's fine. Um, so like I <laughs> fucking what's the movie? What's the show called? Which one? The zombie goddamn Walking movie. Dead. Walking Dead. Oh my God. I tried to watch that for so long, but it was so hard for me because, you know, the world as they knew it was over. And f- for years, there was no sign of hope of human life, of the world turning into the regular society again there were zombies everywhere why the fuck would you want to live like that and then they had a baby you fucking idiots on purpose yeah but wasn't on purpose i would have killed the baby it almost got them killed so many times i anyway i stopped watching you're you're not getting it though why are they pushing that so far because they they they're thinking for humanity's sake yeah i would never do that exactly so 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 why would they kill the baby humanity Mm. right you just don't think that way no. obviously those people obviously it's all fucking fake and shit like that but <laughs> they were trying to survive for humanity's sake i just don't give a rat's ass about humanity's sake but like also what you've said about like the our world possibly have been you know human hum god i hate when i can't speak human human life being wiped out multiple times and restarted could have been multiple times it could have been what if that is true could have been. I also don't think we benefit anyone. No. I don't think humans benefit the world. I don't think anything benefits anything. So, <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm like. We if, are just on this who, living our lives. If we're going to all die, fucking take me out right away, please. Actually, let me know a few weeks in advance so I can try heroin. Only if I know I'm going to die, though. Only if I know I'm going to die. God, some of the spelling on this. Fuck me. <laughs> What was the cause of the biggest post nut clarity? Good or bad? Post nut clarity. I don't think about stuff like this either. I have a hard time with that. So do I. I definitely, maybe for me, um, prior to breaking up with partners, my last memorable moments, my last couple times having sex with them when I knew it was going to be over. I think, I guess that would be my most post not clarity was like, you know, after having sex with them, like kind of like realizing like it's it's done. It's done. Yeah. It's not there anymore. So that's That's probably my biggest post not clarity. Mm -hmm. Um, we already talked about this. At what points did the core relationship nearly not make it honestly just at the very beginning. Yeah. And that one time that we already discussed on this podcast, Mm -hmm. those are like the only two times that I think we were like, Oh shit, (laughs) it might not work. (laughs) <laughs> whose family is worse in general in brackets for the love of all that's good don't name names <laughs> mine jesus christ yeah i have to say so i guess but is it their fault that they're worse i wouldn't say so <laughs> look at this guy he's a fucking saint oh everyone's everyone's everyone is them for a certain reason you know so like you can't blame them you blame everything else. <laughs> mm. It's the cycle that's created bad people, you know? Like, I don't know. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, but why are we breaking the cycle? Because we're better than that. And we put the thought exactly. into it. Exactly. So why can't, I put the why can't thought they be better thinking. than that? Because they're not thinking that way. But they're only that way. Bec- you were only this way because of your mom. But you're putting the thought of changing and wanting to change, right? It takes process for that growth. But you weren't in that reason for you. It wasn't your fault that you were the way you were. It was your mom's fault. But it wasn't your your mom's fault for treating you that way either. It was her mom's fault. And then it continues. And it goes forth, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's just that cycle. Mm. You have to be willing to grow, though. I 100% agree on that for sure. But in the end, you can't blame specific people for 
what they're doing and their actions, unless they're literally a psychopath. <laughs> if there's something actually wrong in their brain where they're thinking in ways that are like not morally correct or like just like not clinically correct, then yes, then that's that's something at fault for them or their brain or their, their chemicals in their brain. But I think I d- disagree with you, unfortunately. It's not unfortunate. <laughs> well, I just, I just feel like, um, you know, it's not people's fault that they're the way that they are. Everyone has trauma. Everyone's the way that they are because of people that impacted them to be the way that they are. But I do think that everyone has just as equal of an opportunity to change. Maybe not quite as equal. I shouldn't even say it that way. Everyone has the opportunity to change, uh, especially when, like, given the opportunity, when presented with moments to converse about things. You know, yeah, you like, can be presented all you want, but if you don't, if, if if innately you don't feel the urge to do it, then you're not going to. Mm. So, and at that point, then I blame them. Well, I still, I still wouldn't blame them. It's, it, I, I, I feel even more saddened for them that they can't be as open as we are. Because Mm -hmm. they have some vulnerability locked away that they can't access to because they feel some shame about there or something like that. So, I don't know. Again, I feel that too. I maybe feel a tiny bit sad for them, but I mostly look down upon them and like pity them. Yeah, I don't. I don't look down on people. Mm. I feel sad for people that, or even those guys that call me really bad slurs online Mm -hmm. because I paint my nails or they call me a cuck because you fuck other dudes or they they call me all these bad things. I don't look down on them. I feel very sad for them. Mm. I really do. I look down on them. (laughs) We're different in those ways. Oh, this is another silly one. What would teenage you have to say to yourself now? That's funny because it's usually the other way around, right? Yeah, well, it's usually like, what would you say to your younger self? That's how the question's usually laid out. Right. This is interesting. We should, we should comment on both, but let's start with what, what would teenage asked? you, you can go first have you to want. say to yourself now? Honestly, my teenage self would be so proud. Mm-hmm. I was always a crazy, sex-driven, bit of a slut, whatever. Until you met me. <laughs> I still am. What are you talking about? You're, you're, you're a better slut now. Yeah. You're a slut for the right reasons, not the <laughs> wrong ones. I'm not just pleasuring men for the sake of their pleasure uh, anymore. But yeah, no, my teenage self would be very proud. Uh, very, very proud. Very excited. Very uh, enthused. Very happy to know that I would get to a point in my life that I would not feel ashamed for sex. I'd probably say the same thing. I probably would be proud to only because I feel like, you know, younger James, teenage James, he was super shy. And if I would, if I were to see myself now, I'd be like, that's, that's not possible. There's no way that that could be what you're doing. And this gets brought up a lot from like people that I knew from the past or norm, our normie friends. They, they ask us like, wow, like James, do you ever, look? that's you to this, but James, do you ever look back and be like, and think like, oh wow, this is what you'd be doing in, like in in the present day. And of course, the answer is no. No. Yeah. But I feel like they they ask like some people ask that question, and they, I think they frame it in the sense of like, man, growing up, I thought what it would be like to be a porn star or something like that. Okay. I never thought like that. Right. I never once thought what it would be like to have a lifestyle like this. I think some people do. I did. So I didn't at all. Yeah. I always wore Playboy everything. Mm-hmm. Playboy stickers. Playboy necklaces, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I have to say, I'd, I'd probably be like, damn, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I, what I planned on my plan A and plan B in, in, in grade 12. You're not a fucking paramedic or a guitar teacher. <laughs> yeah. And the glow up, though. Yeah, I mean, I think the glow up continues no matter what. I think, that, I think if people think you glow up and then high school and that's it, like... You, there's so much more growing to do. People that glow up in high school are the ones that, unfortunately, in their late twenties and thirties, are plummeting very quickly. I just like I don't understand. I don't understand that mentality of. I mean, it's very youthful thinking, I guess. But I don't know. High school was just such a throw off, throw away for me. Like I didn't care about it at all. I didn't even care about school, like education. Mm-hmm. I was like an A B average, but I didn't put lots of effort into it until I got into college. I'm like, oh wait, I'm putting money in this. I want to actually try 
I fucking like did so good in, in school. Mm. Uh, but I didn't care about it, b- being younger and, and stuff like that. It just didn't make any sense to me. I still very, very, I still view it in the sense that 30s is a prime time. Mm-hmm. Like 20s are still very young. And I, I could say the same thing when I'm 40, <laughs> right? I could say, that, oh, when, by the time 30s are done, 40s is the prime time. Right, yeah. But like, I don't know, the older, the older I get, the more I realize like, man, th- like the time is now. Like your brain's not fully developed. Um, we're really falling into who we are as people now. I can only envision our lives improving now that we've really found who we are. Mm-hmm. So. True. I don't know that my thing would be much different. Reverse. If you were you to speak to you back then. I don't know. I mean, mine just goes back to like, I wish I could give myself like sexual health advice mm. when I was that age. I wish I could have been more understanding of my body at that age sure if i'm gonna give it to people i wish i would have been giving it to people and also experiencing my own pleasure sooner Mm -hmm. for sure these questions are are just a little bit difficult for me Mm -hmm. because like i don't know i I don't i don't i can't think in this way because i always feel like even if younger james wasn't as a as wasn't at as a good place as present james is now well i still got here Mm-hmm. So whatever I went through in the past, even if it was troublesome, I still got here. Right. You live in very much like you don't regret. Yes. It, that it was in, you to where that we was intended. Yeah. That was all intended. Yeah. So it's not like I'd go back and be like, don't do this. Mm-hmm. Don't feel this way. I would just say, hey, you're on the right path. <laughs> right. That's probably what I'd say. Maybe I would have gotten into the gym a little sooner too. Oh, yeah, maybe. Uh, sure. I think I would have... You know, like in high school, I very much remember my teachers saying like, I was super athletic all through middle school and high school. And I remember our teachers saying like in the last year of high school, like, by the way, guys, like make sure you're keeping up with your physical health because like your metabolism when you turn 18, like it's going to change. And like, obviously we all get jobs and you know, you stop your school curricular activities, man, my weight by the time I hit like 20 poof like i wish i would have taken that more seriously Mm. and looking at some of the younger people in the gym now i'm like oh wow sure you know but it is what it is and i'm i'm where i'm at now and i'm still happy but i definitely went through like my fluffy stage that i was not as confident the thing is like you think you saying it to yourself would change your your previous self if you're well if it was coming from future me telling me by the way I don't know about that. I mean, your teachers literally told you you didn't give a fuck about it. I know, but if it was me that had already lived my life going to them back then and being like, hey, by the way, you went through this t- t- time when you were 20? It's it's just hard for me to that think up. that your younger self would still take it in. Mm. Because it's hard to even think. Think about how when you're younger, you don't give a fuck. Yeah. You don't listen to stuff. You don't listen to what your parents tell you to do. You just you're in a different thought process. So I feel like you could tell yourself all the things you want. But I hear are, what you're saying. Are you gonna listen to yourself? I may not have listened to myself. <laughs> you're probably honestly. way more stubborn back then. You probably be like, shut the fuck up, bitch. I know you're me, but I don't give a fuck. Do I sound like that? <laughs> do I sound like that? <laughs> you're not wrong. I've always been very stubborn and I always do the polar opposite of what I'm told. So sure, maybe I would have told myself to eat more fast food i don't i don't know i don't know <laughs> fucking dumb uh, god damn it you're gonna hate this one i'm gonna hate this one too i don't think i can answer this one i might have to drink what's your one biggest regret no regrets cheers bitch yeah. These no questions re- are really frustrating no me. regrets what's the pettiest shit you've ever done Oh fucking no. No, no I don't do I'm petty sure shit. I've done I've sure I've done a lot in I'm the sure past. Sure you've done a lot. Probs. Yeah, I do petty shit sometimes. Dunno. Can't remember. I don't have a drink left, so it's fine. What's your biggest guilty pleasure? Definitely picking the gunk out from under my big toenails. Mm. I fucking love that. Using the little scraper and like getting like under the corners. Ooh, all the little dirt and built up stuff under That's there. So weird. I was just gonna say anime. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> anyway i guess that could be considered a guilty pleasure right sometimes like especially after editing and stuff and i just want to, to stop working yeah i'll just throw on an anime and watch it yeah especially with my new setup it's fantastic um i don't know if i have like a weird guilty pleasure 
in the sense that of like that you do. Mine's like the weird shit. Yeah, I like popping your pimples when you want me to pop your pimples. I love that shit. Uh, and I don't mind that too. I, which is funny because we watched that perfect match thing and they said cute or cute or creepy or whatever. I'm like, and they pop almost my all said cringy. And pop I was my, like, pop my what? pimples. I don't care. Um, I do really like cleaning your ears. So I do James's ears. I do really like that. It's like a little game mm-hmm. for me. I love it. And my ears just produce a lot of earwax. Yeah. So he a doesn't like to, he doesn't like to use Q tips himself because it will push the earwax in. I've had really bad experiences. So yes, I I go in and like pull it out if that makes sense. I love all that shit. I love weird, weird picky. I'm quite the picker, so anything like that I love. You are. I'm a picker. Mm-hmm. Love that shit. So I don't know. That's probably my guilty pleasures. If you could change one thing about me, what would it be? I feel like I already know what he's gonna say. Mm. Again, if I, I, I just especially I don't know if it's because in my head of what we've just been talking about, but I don't know if I'd change anything about you. Like, I love everything about you, even the bad stuff, because that's just who you are. You know, uh, if I had to choose, maybe just your level of openness, uh, in regards of like connecting, but so you're like I guess your stubbornness. <laughs> Maybe if you, you, you're pretty stubborn. <laughs> so if that's one thing I could change. I'd probably change that. You don't want me to be, um, you don't want me to meditate with you and be like a little more woohoo-y? Not necessarily. Hmm. But I already see it changing too, though. You know? Mm-hmm. So I, I see you changing. So I don't know. Again, I, I, I like everything about you. How do you top that, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I know what I would have said prior, but like sure. I don't feel that way anymore. I used to not feel like James was very like work motivated and like hungry for it. Cause I, was, I wasn't working on the right job. Yeah. And that's just it. Since, since we've been working together, like that's gone completely out the window, which is another reason why I think I'm just even more in love with you. I've been very um, like extra needy, which isn't like a usual characteristic of me. I feel, I feel like I've been more attracted to you and more needy for you. Well, that also happens when we're like fucking work doing what we do for work with other people and stuff like that too. Right. I feel that, that that sensation comes up too. Yeah. I was talking to somebody today and she said she gets the, um, I gotta pull it up. I don't know how she worded it, but I was like, Ooh, I think I reclaim reclaiming kink. I've never heard of it before, but I think I might have it too because like basically right after he fucks other people for work, I'm like, okay, now give it to me. Now I want you. And I like giving it to you. Yeah. But like, it's because when I fuck other people for work, it really is work. Mm-hmm. Like and then when we set when we have sex like to feel that contrast, mm-hmm. it's amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it, it is. Yeah, I'd agree. <laughs> what was your worst date ever in detail? I don't think I have one. I, I didn't. I actually didn't go on many dates to be honest. Oh, I've definitely had some bad ones, but it, again, you guys, like this is really hard for me because I don't really have place in my tiny little memory box for stupid shit like this but um yeah no there was definitely this one guy how did this go he wanted to he asked me to go on a date but i was like house sitting my parents house at the time and they had two dogs and so i didn't really want yes yes we went on a hike yep you told me this one I don't remember exactly. This is shortly before I met you. Yeah, we went on this hike and um, it was really weird. It like ended and I thought everything was fine, but like he wasn't super enthused about having to do like physical activity or about having the dogs. He like didn't really seem like he wanted to be on a hike, which was weird. And then you just wanted to fuck you for your reputation. I do think that's what happened actually he wasn't local he wasn't really local so i don't think he really knew me but um yeah he was really weird and then i didn't he didn't go in for a kiss or anything like that when we left but then after the fact he kind of like ghosted me and i was like all right like what the fuck happened and he he had said something along the lines of like oh well you you never kissed me that day and like got all butthurt about that and i was like what like you showed no sign of enthusiasm about walking my dogs or having fun with me and you also didn't try to kiss me anyway he ended up buying my tent trailer off me afterwards and that was fine so whatever that made up for it (laughs) fucking weird (laughs) 
he bought it off of me and i had fucking wrecked this tent trailer he bought it off of me for the same amount that i bought it for like five years prior so i was like take it i don't fucking care but that was a pretty bad day yeah that was weird who doesn't want to walk dogs in nature some people i guess that's so weird i also just think if i was in a first date situation i'd be so accommodating yeah of course i'd go with you and of course i tried the dogs is actually an easy in pets animals so it's actually such an easy especially a dog there's like a, <gasps> just pet the dog yeah like less awkward situations yes. pet the dog talk to the dog exactly. honestly and you can see their little quirkiness when they're like talking to pets or like throwing the ball or mm -hmm. i don't know it's way better than just like sitting across the table from somebody like eating food but yeah no he like didn't want to walk the dog so i was like okay I feel like this this episode is just an extended q a <laughs> it is in the end of it it's just really it's just all <laughs> but it's nice to have so many questions coming from the people that follow us it's actually really cool yeah all of, all of these yeah um we're getting to the last three questions okay what was your worst job ever worst job ever was probably delivering pizzas uh <laughs> and the, the place i delivered to it was like a local company and the reason why they did so well is because they literally delivered to the entire city Usually, like, say, a chain company, like a Domino's, for example, there's different Domino's in different parts of the city, and they, they deliver their section that's close to them, right? The one that I did, the entire fucking city. The entire city. <laughs> and we were open till 6 a.m. on the weekends. That's disgusting. And those are the shifts that I worked. My shift started at 10.30 or 10, and I would go until 6 a.m. And Who's ordering pizza at 6 a.m.? People are. The worst experience I had was, though, my last shift sun's rising oh. 6 a.m's coming i get to their house no answer oh my god call them no answer so what i just take the pizza home <laughs> but like i was like is that out of your pocket uh no i don't think so it wasn't my fault or anything like that yeah. um but there was something magical i think there's always something magical sunrise when you're awake and you know everyone else is sleeping and oh. you were hustling i was mm -hmm. working right mm -hmm. but like at 6 a.m the only people on the like traffic wise was cabs and semis and um and pizza boys pizza delivery boys like me and i don't know there's just like yeah coming home to that knowing mm -hmm. everyone's still asleep and i can just start sleeping now and i wouldn't sleep right away i'd fucking watch like of remember course would. i was i was binge watching boy meets world again <laughs> during that timeline uh but i'd get home watch boy meets world eat some pizza or whatever then i go to bed but man that job was really stress inducing that was, that was my first job ever um so first time in the workforce but then also like it was your first job ever you were already driving yeah, I didn't work. I don't. I, we talked about this. I didn't really work. I didn't work till out of high school. Right. Wow. You worked since you were in middle school. I didn't. I worked li really late. Like mm -hmm. plus, mom and uh, dad didn't want me to. Like they just want me to focus on school or whatever. Uh -huh. Um. So, but yeah, like I remember being so stressful because I didn't know the city very much either. So mm. I'd be constantly on my GPS, and I made so many mistakes and stuff. Um. Yeah, I did it for like I think two or three months, and that was it for me. That's fair. I don't really know that I've had like bad jobs. I think I've like, I honestly am such a workaholic that like once I learn my job, I quite literally put everything I have into my jobs. So there is always a part of me that ends up loving my job no matter what it is. I did Wendy's and I loved it. Mark's work warehouse and I learned everything about work boots. Like I was the work boot genius, like stupid shit like that. Um, I've liked all of my jobs. I would say maybe the worst was like at 12, I was babysitting two young boys, which looking back at that now is pretty irresponsible, I think. Because 12 is too young? I think 12 is too young, but also because I was a female, I had never been around babies, let alone baby of the opposite gender. And I had to, you know, help them with things that like a mother figure should be there for, you know, they, they pee the bed or they pee their pants or I'd have to change a diaper. And like, I didn't even know what a penis was. I didn't know how to clean that. I didn't know what I was doing at all. Um, I barely knew how to cook on the stove. Like, thankfully I was able to make us grilled cheese and mac and cheese and that kind of stuff. But like looking back at it, I don't really think a 12 year old girl should be changing the diaper of two young boys when she's never, she doesn't even know anything about how any of that works it's a great learning experience i'm sure was it though I mean, clearly you don't want to have kids now <laughs> <laughs> you learn from that <laughs> yeah so just kind of strange 12 like 12 years old that seems really young i think i might have even been 11 because i was in grade five and six at the time um you know and like 
yeah it was weird i remember i would always like put them to bed and then i would fall asleep on their couch downstairs and then you know the parents would get home like late from whatever date night they were on they were on on like a saturday night and then they'd like drive me home but um it was always weird it was weird for how long, sure how long were you watching their family for I think I was baby. I think I babysitted them maybe like less than ten times total. Okay. But yeah, hmm. it was just kind of strange. When I look back at it, I'm like, man, if somebody would have like broken into the house, would I have had any clue what to do? Absolutely not. How did you know them? I actually don't know the answer to that. Hmm. I'm pretty sure they were friends of my mother's. We lived in Fort McMurray at the time. I think they were friends of my mother's that she made from like she used to drive school buses so i think it was another school bus lady and her husband and her kids i think but i actually don't remember it's kind of out of my brain hmm. <laughs> i would just remember like having to try to figure out how to cook and watching tv with them and playing toy trains god i hated and it nothing weird ever happened well other than like little accidents parents didn't do anything no 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 no, no. nothing like that hmm. I would just always feel weird like asking for their money when they would drive me home. And I think it was almost always the dad that would drive me home too. And I think I always had to be like really awkward. Like they would never just hand me the money. They would like almost wait for me to be like, okay, so like this is how much you owe me. And of course, back in the day, it was like dirt cheap. I think mm -hmm. it would be like 60 bucks for the night, you know? So, but uh, yeah, it was weird. I probably shouldn't have been doing that, but I've always, I've always worked, so... Do you have sex dreams? If so, is it of your partner or someone else in your life? Or even better yet, is it a celebrity? Never a celebrity. I think very infrequently I have sex dreams. When the sex is about to happen, it's always when you wake up. But I think maybe it's because now we're in the sex industry where it like seems more normal in my head. Mm -hmm. But also like when I was getting into lucid dreaming really hard at the time, there was one semi lucid dream I had where I was fully aware and fully there. Um, and most often it is you and there's an occasion where it's not you. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do talk about it. <laughs> he literally will wake up and be like, this is what I dreamt of like all the time. Like you tell me right off the bat. It's not like you keep your like sex dreams a secret. No, I think sex dreams are exciting. <laughs> I think it really is exciting. You wake up and you'd be like, fuck, this almost happened in my dream. And then I woke up. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's girls that I can't even remember who they are. You know, when you dream of yes. people that you can't even put, put a finger on where you even met them or yes. knew them. Sometimes it's, it's, it's like that for sure. But yeah, very infrequently having sex dreams. Don't have them very often. I'm, I'm living it more than anything now. <laughs> Um, it's very rare that I dream when I'm actually sleeping, sleeping. However, I do often have weird sex dreams when I take tiny naps. Um, I don't know. I dream really weird things when I take smaller naps. Um, I can't tell you if there's ever, and again, this is a weird, this is a weird thing for me. I think I will have a dream where I am actually having sex with someone. They're faceless. I like feel the pleasure and sometimes I'll wake up and even think like, did I literally orgasm in my sleep? I have no idea who the person was. It's just a body. Like it's just a body and not a person. I don't know if that makes sense. I can, I think that like just goes off of the fact that how much you can like disassociate from sex. Yes. Or how much getting to know the person's actual personality turns you off from sex. You just like the sex. You just like feeling pleased. Uh -huh. I think that's what it's saying to you and showing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there's been a handful of times that this has happened to me over the course of my life. Like I'm aware that these are things that have happened to me in my dreams. And I'll literally like touch myself after and be like, am I what? Like what's going on? Um, but yeah, it's not a person. It's not a celebrity. It's not an ex. It's not a friend. It's not a coworker. It's it's just a penis. It's just someone fucking me. Yeah. It, oh. I'm assuming it's a penis. It's, a, it's always a penis. Yeah, it is always a penis. So, don't know. Not sure. It's almost always. No, it's not almost always, but often it will be. I have had dreams too where like I will be. Is it called lucid dreaming when you're aware that you're dreaming? Mm -hmm. There's levels to okay, it Okay, so like there'll be moments where I'll like be dreaming and I'll know that I'm asleep, but I can't wake up. So mm -hmm. this is a big thing. For, oh, 
sleep apnea Par- no. paralysis paralysis yeah um and i'll be like totally sleeping i'll know that i'm napping on the couch but i'm feeling like i'm being i don't want to use the r word but i'm feeling like i'm being taken advantage of sexually but it's also getting me off hmm. i've had a couple of those too but again i have, i don't know there's no there's no face to it so very interesting all right that was dark you guys i'm so sorry i'm fucked up <laughs> clearly i get apparently, embarrassed about this shit apparently i'm really into the crazies I was talking to one of the girls that were at the collab. I'm just like, yeah, I just like, I don't know why I'm so attracted to like, just like weirdos. Like just people that are just kind of out there. I just, I look beyond their facade, their weird facade. I just really get attracted to that. And they're just like, yeah, clearly. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, I didn't even think about it like that. But yeah, I guess. Someone said that. Was I there for that? It was Lex said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly. Fuck. Yeah. Okay. This is the last one, you guys. How long does it take for you to come or can you hold it or does holding it ruin it for you? Um, I think it varies. It definitely varies. Depends on how like stimulated and aroused you are. Mm-hmm. And, you know. I think on average, it doesn't take me very long. <laughs> and then the second part of the question is, can, can you, you hold, hold it? it? I try Absolutely, to, I can. can. Does it ruin it? Sometimes, but typically Depends not. Depends how far you get pushed. Yes. Yes. If I come by accident, my final orgasm is usually very depleted. Uh-huh. I don't feel it as much. But at the same token, sometimes, it hasn't happened lately, but in the past a lot, if I do come a little bit if I uh, by accident, I usually I usually have more endurance. Yeah, you can last longer. I can longer usually after. last longer after. But mm-hmm. lately, it hasn't been feeling that way. <laughs> <laughs> so. Our last, like, three sex tapes. Yes. He fucking <laughs> has, like, how do you even... We've edged him slightly too far to the point of like streams of come mildly coming. <laughs> yeah, every single. We're time. like we're not trying to, but and I used to be very embarrassed of that. I mean, I used to be very embarrassed of just coming early in general, and you uh. know that. And then even in our very first sex tape that we filmed, that happened, and I wasn't even sure if I wanted to keep it in the edit. Like I don't know if, sure if I wanted to edit it out or not, but people seemed into it. They were into so, it. So. They're like, oh my God, it's like seeping out slowly, but he's still not fully come yet. I just, I honestly didn't understand the concept that girls found that hot too. It's so hot. Are you kidding? Being like, oh my God, like he's, he's He's so close to coming all the time. I can't remember what, 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 remember when, but during one of the sex scenes, I was super close to coming. I'm just like, you got to stop going. You got to stop moving right now. Or, or you said it. You're like, oh, if he's fucking you like that, that means he's close. Uh huh. And then she was just like, oh, that's hot. (laughs) Oh my god, it's just so funny because back in the day you'd think that's pussy moves. Oh, I'm, not, I'm coming that quick. That's no. so bad of you. Uh, but now it's just like, you're that close? That's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's so funny. Um, how long does it take for you to come? So for me, this is like definitely so situational. Mm-hmm. There'll be times that it's like, I'll come so fast. And there'll be times that I'm like begging to come, like trying so hard to get there and I can't it can feel amazing and i can be like literally right on the cusp but like can't get there and it's very frustrating i also think you get less frustrated now though i'm trying now when you have those moments and we're going through that you seem like you're just enjoying the process a little bit more yes and being less in your head about not being able to which in in the end it inevitably makes you come right because you're less in your head yes so i think you're getting better at it yeah for sure um can I hold it? Okay, so here's another crazy... Here's the other thing. If it gets to the point where I'm actually going to, I dare not hold it. If I hold it, it might go and it might not come yep, back. Exactly. You know, it's it's not... Edge play isn't quite... I mean, I've edged myself before, but like with actual sex, it's tricky because I can't promise it'll come back. Mm-hmm. It sometimes takes like a very specific thing to have to happen so no if i'm gonna come i just fuck it i'm coming and then you know james can take as little or as long as time as he wants so once i do we can go for as little or as long as time as we want afterwards it's fine yeah that's true right like it doesn't ever happen very often anymore though like after you come i'm usually coming right away or shortly <laughs> it's or very rare that you can after. fuck me through me coming sometimes i do though but or sometimes like even like we're having sex and i'm like okay i'm I'm not going to come when she comes. and But typically speaking, 
when you come, it turns me on a lot. But there's also times where like I could I could definitely slow down and make it through, but I'm just like, fuck it. Might as well come to you. <laughs> Might as well come to you. But there's been times in the past, especially like, oh, I want to keep fucking you. And mm-hmm. uh, but that thought hasn't come up as much anymore. Or as much. Yeah. I think you're giving in more to the fact that my favorite thing is when we so. come together and I think so. Even the- though I do want to have sex longer. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But I have also, you know, it it's unfortunate. We've met some people and we've now talked to some people that can women that can experience like multiple orgasms back to back it's just not my reality Mm -hmm. um it's still pleasurable after for a certain amount of time until i feel like i dry out which does eventually happen after the fact um so yeah you've you've got a bit of a ticking time bomb afterwards like i only have so much after i come that i can give you uh, for sex wise like i'll keep going in other in other means but sure. my vagina can only handle so much there's after. also times for me that i don't want to come inside of you yes because again i like visually seeing my cum and sometimes i feel like it feels better sometimes i feel like it feels better like when i come inside of you it feels really good because i know you enjoy it so much okay but in regards to what i'm feeling sensation wise sometimes a blowjob or a handjob feels a lot better interesting like my actual orgasm feels physically a lot better well shit i never knew that you never told me that it's so okay. now we're gonna have to it's fuck okay. around it's fine I, I i like making you come by coming inside of you so <laughs> we gotta share we gotta share who gets what here so i had one question i, I screenshotted from your little thing from wherever go when did each of when did each one of you first lick a pussy I'm supposed to know the answer to this, and I should know the answer to this. I, I literally I just know. said myself too, like I can't even remember licking anyone else other than you before I met you. But so I, I can't even tell you. Did I even go down my first girlfriend? I don't think so. Oh my god! When did I lick my first pussy? So this is tricky because back in high school, I definitely had a threesome where I invited a good girlfriend of mine to f- fuck around with me and my boyfriend. I know for sure I fingered her don't know if i ate her out Hmm. like don't really remember that night that much we were all drinking we were all whatever um i don't think i did and if i did it wouldn't have been for long so then i'm going back to like the next threesome that i had i also don't remember that that much but like it's not that i was like fucked up i just literally don't have a good memory like i remember what she looks like i remember you know how we got her home but i don't really remember the course of the events of what happened in that room I remember that her and I paid attention to each other and basically excluded my boyfriend at the time. <laughs> so maybe I licked her pussy. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. I know I was nervous the first time I was going to do it for work. For sure. Yeah, you seem like you weren't really experienced with it before work. Not so. spe- experienced enough to really know what I'm doing, especially f- to look good on the camera. I it's, don't think it ever looks really good on the camera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and i've also like worked with some people that are like oh you don't have to actually eat me out like you can just pretend and i'm like huh i'm not gonna do that i get i get what you mean but like that's not fun Mm -hmm. let's just fucking eat each other out why not yeah i don't know i get that maybe not everybody's actually you know a lot of women that are in the industry aren't actually into women um so I, I guess for them, like, sure, go ahead. You can fake eat me out if you want. It's kind of weird, but... Um, uh, I think it just separates the types... It separates the types of sex workers, you know? Yeah. I feel like lately we've been meeting a lot of people that are obviously into, like, you know, just girls and guys. We're like just looking for people that are more authentic, authentically trying to have fun. Exactly. A fun time collaborating. Yes, we're collaborating. Yes, we're making content for work um obviously work is the top priority but we're still fucking around and having a good time it helps when it's fun yeah of course it does um i think you know because i'm not gonna lie i've tasted my own pussy multiple times you know whether it's being fucked and then sucking the dick after or you know fucking yourself with a toy and then licking it after whatever like i've definitely tasted myself enough to like be like oh okay this is what pussy tastes like um and so then when you go to like explore that on somebody else for the first time and they taste totally different it's kind of like oh interesting it wasn't bad but it was interesting this is one of the ones where like i could taste on their mouth their saliva and like on their vagina that they were um smokers so 
Yeah, obviously health has a huge factor in how people tell it, taste it, and smell. We've said it multiple times in the past, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's not no one's fault, and, like, it was fine. Other than um, that, it was totally fine. You know, everyone was clean, and, um, yeah, it was, it's actually not that bad. Do I know if I was doing an actual good job? No. I was just fucking looking and fingering at the same time, you know? I was trying to do everything all at once, but I don't know if I was actually fucking doing it. I mean, I also feel like there's not much you can do to a pussy versus a dick. I feel there's more things you could do to a dick. Yeah. I just really think so. Because with 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 a vagina, if you're talking about the G-spot, mm. there's only a few things you need to do to hit the G-spot. Mm-hmm. Is hit the G-spot. It's pretty... It's pretty yeah Bang on. you can tease around and stuff like that for but for pleasure for the pleasure like that yeah you just want to hit that g-spot right yeah um and then there's the clit number one likes it a little different but i don't know I yeah the, like... the clit's the tricky thing yeah I've... obviously you pay attention to it but like how do you pay mm-hmm. attention to everyone it? likes it differently mm-hmm. um but i just feel like you can stroke the penis so many different ways <laughs> You know, it's a lot of fun. And then the balls are there too. And then there's a the shot. The and, and the butthole. There's so much. There yeah. really is way more, I think. Mm-hmm. So I don't blame you. Trust me, I know. Mm-hmm. I don't blame you for not feeling like you know what you do. But then the other thing with um with work eating out a pussy, and this is hard. Real life me, face in, like all in. I don't give a fuck. When your makeup's done to the tits and you're planning on filming like four different videos that day. I don't really want my whole, you know, ring around my mouth and my nose to go missing in someone's cooter, 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 coochie. I don't know. <laughs> and one of, um, oh, fucking Kitty said it. She's like, oh, it's my favorite after fucking oh, yeah. getting eaten out. And then you go to use the washroom after and you, foundation you use a wet pussy. wipe and your fucking pussy's full of foundation. I'm like, oh my yeah. God. That's the reality for sure. Fuck. So, yeah, you know, when you're filming, you're always careful to, like, mm, you really stick your tongue out and use yeah, your tongue. Not, I, don't but, like, th- I don't think about that at all, obviously, but... Yeah, if it was just, like, bedroom at night when I don't have any makeup on, I feel like I'd be fucking, like, mm-hmm. using my nose, using my tongue, using everything, so, I don't know. Yeah, I definitely just eat it the same way I would eat it for a regular. Yeah, well, you're not covered in foundation. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky that way. Blessed. You don't got any more? No, that was just the one. Apparently, I only had one screenshot. It so nice. Well, we made it. We got through two drinks. Yeah, I think we would have gotten through those drinks no matter what. But what do you mean? Oh, like just casually. Sitting yeah, here? just casually sitting here. Yeah. Well, I definitely could have gone through more than that, but I didn't really want to get Amanda drunk. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm kind of disappointed with these questions. I'm sorry. But I uh, know. I'm not. I'm not. Well, you don't have to apologize. They should apologize. <laughs> I don't know if people are like embarrassed to ask them because they're like, oh, no, like you can see that it's me on Instagram or something. I don't think I don't know. so. I think I think it's just showing really how different our lifestyle is for yeah. some people because some other people's. Cause what, what do you ask? You ask for spicy, hot topics. Yeah, it was like make right? us drink. Yeah. And then so what? Th- three things in the desert. <laughs> Uh, that's their version of spicy hot topics i don't know so i just think i I really think our reality is just a lot different from the average person's and that's just what we have to get reminded of so yeah even just like what's your number like it's just funny i know a lot of people wouldn't want to answer that Mm -hmm. i don't give a fuck and like um I i thought about this when these questions are coming up and everything or when people talk but ask us for sex stuff we constantly say that we're vanilla right yeah because in our minds we're vanilla well compared to a lot of people in the industry that have all these crazy kinks correct but for the normies that aren't in the sex industry we're not vanilla they probably look at us like whoa that's exciting yeah well the fact that we enjoy sharing each other right then and there like that's that's not vanilla to a lot of people yeah but in my mind it's like oh whatever I'm like, oh, we have some under the bed restraints that we've used twice. <laughs> true, <laughs> true, true. So it's gotten more use from work, from your 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 like five girl BDSM. My video, yes, yeah. It got more work from your video than the actual personal. Stuff, I don't so. know why we don't use it more. I don't know. We just don't think about it. We just don't think about it. We gotta we gotta set it up under Plus, the bed. Didn't I just I just moved the mattress? I don't remember seeing it there anymore. No, because it's not under there. You moved it it's put away oh. like it has we kept it under there the whole we time we haven't had it hooked up since we moved upstairs oh we left it on the other bed 
Yes, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, so we should maybe hook that one up because, you know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe not. I mean, maybe I'm feeling more subby. Maybe I'll, I'll feel good for that. But but yeah, so I think the reality Shut up. is. You'd love it if I just fucked the shit out of you when you were strapped down. I don't know. I like feeling your butt and stuff like that too, though. I like feeling your body. Uh, if I can't feel your body, I don't know if it's the same. Mm, um, I feel like you'd like I think we'd have like... to role play it more for me to get into it more rather than just doing it. I think the role play is the key because then it really feels like, okay, I'm strapped down for a reason. Okay. okay. I think that'll help me in my mind more, but. We can role play. Uh, but yeah, the reality. See, we don't even role play. <laughs> we're just, yeah, we're just. Uh, we just fuck each other as ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to be strapped down face down. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Face down is definitely nice because I mean, face down when you're face down, that's definitely when I feel you know, like I'm taking advantage of you the most, uh-huh. like a doggy face down or whatever. The amount of times I'm like, oh my God, you're making me feel such a horn dog. Like the way I fuck you when you're face down, stuff like that. No. I don't often get to feel that way very I often. I love it. So yeah, when you, when you bring that guy out of me, I'm just like, damn, okay. Yeah. I just looked at the cat on the monitor and was like, hmm, <laughs> tiny kitten. Okay. Well, I don't know how long this has been long enough are we yeah we're calling it we're gonna make some dinner yeah uh, is there anything else you want to talk about i don't know um but yeah we're, we're excited for our other collabs to come out um we have a lot after all of our collabs come through i counted that's four collabs i mean that's four people on the podcast i think ideally we try to we try we're trying to do uh four a, an episode of us in between so we had read then we had us then we had Lex, then we have us, then we're gonna have Jesse, then we're gonna have us, then we're gonna have Bailey, then we're gonna have us. Mm-hmm. Like, that's crazy. It's a lot. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's happening, which is nuts. I know. I almost feel bad that this was a um, truth or drink episode because I kind of just feel like we need to just like talk our normal shit, but we will. We will. There's a lot. We got a lot going on, you guys. Mm-hmm. Also, I don't really think, excuse me, we don't have that much to talk about because literally our lives are just editing right now. <laughs> yeah other than collabs which you know when we talk to the people that we're working with you get to hear about it so Mm -hmm. true you know we could recap just after the fact but like you know we basically recapped the whole thing when we talked to lex the last time so Mm -hmm. yeah we got a lot going on we got four days until our next collab yeah and by the time you hear this podcast it would have already been said and done Mm -hmm. moving on to the next (laughs) It's yeah, wild. It's, it's actually hard. I almost want to stop dating these podcasts because by the time you guys see them, it's it's going to be a couple weeks later. Yeah, so just stop. So, <laughs> <gasps> Yeah, all I can think about is like, fuck, we just have so much work to do. I didn't know this squeaked. Nice. Sorry, that's my duck. Yeah. I don't think there's anything else. No. Uh, if you guys liked this, let us know. We'd be happy to do it again if you can come up with other questions. That'd be sick. <laughs> No pressure. It just, man, it just feels like we missed you guys. It just feels like it's been a while since we've both just done this. Yeah. It feels like it's been a long time, to be honest. So, it has. and uh, it is nice. So, I got a little bit of a buzz on. I think I'm going to maybe order some food. Oh, guys, we did it. We're past a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Oh. You guys helped us out. We're actually at like 1,300. We actually made $4.38 today from YouTube ads. No, not YouTube ads. That's that's our streaming platforms. We're not monetizing YouTube yet. Oh. That's that's our audio. Just our audio. We made $4.82. <laughs> but it goes for paying for the distributor anyways. So <laughs> we're not making anything. We're fucking rich. But yeah, so <laughs> I, I, yeah, you, YouTube, you, YouTube gang, you guys are really like climbing up on YouTube's us right now. YouTube's coming in clutch. Yeah, it's, I, you guys are really subscribing and I feel kind of bad that we're, we switched to going bi-weekly as soon as we were getting more subscribers in. But hopefully that makes you guys just, you know, want to like ready for it, for it more. But I think... Here's the mentality of our podcast now. Yes, huh. we switched to bi-weekly, but I think we're going to go bi-weekly continually. Uh-huh. But if we have an extra episode with a guest, we might squeeze it in yeah. for an in-between episode and you guys might get lucky for a... A week and a half would be perfect, but how are we supposed to schedule that? Yeah. It's so very hard. Expect bi-weekly so, and yeah. then hope for a, a, a random one for Even an Even if it's like week. one a month, a random one would be cool. Just an mm-hmm. extra. But it could happen. We'll see what happens. It could happen if we're not backlogged that's, yeah. the, that's the only thing also remember though and i'm gonna plug us we put out brand new videos for free every week on both of our only fans pages so you know if you're missing us 
You can see us weekly. You can see us every single week. Mm -hmm. And both pages have different videos. So Yep. And lots of you guys have actually been reaching out on our on our on our OnlyFans being like Yeah. I saw your podcast and I don't know how I was so late on your guys' podcast or you guys and I had to subscribe, so uh, thanks mm-hmm. for being open to us. Like we, I mean, we actually really love hearing where you guys come from, and if it's yeah. from the podcast, that's even, I don't know, in my mind, that's even better because you 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 got to meet us as us first, mm-hmm. and then you get to see the other side, kind of like our alter ego, but not necessarily. Like it is our lives, but you know, you get to see us first versus some people see our thirst nice. traps. They see, oh, this is a hot couple, then they want to see the hotter side of us. But yeah, you get to humanize us a little bit exactly it's nice i I really appreciate that we really appreciate that but Mm -hmm. we've also i've also been noticing we do have quite a lot of people that are subscribed to both so Mm -hmm. love that as well you end up getting you know two free videos a week if you do that uh but also i've been uh recently getting a lot more um couples god i love getting couples on there i love doing custom couple content if i get to like you know spice up your love life couples even women like it's been, cause like when I was helping you run your your own page, mm-hmm. it's like all men, mm-hmm. right? And now that we're now that I'm running our, our page, page has a lot of women, a lot of women, and yeah. I reach out and stuff like that. So it's, it's really nice. cool to it's really cool to see the women on there for sure. Totally, I, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, there's one more thing. Oh, and if you guys didn't, if you guys aren't on the spicy page, uh, last episode with Lex. That was the first oh. time we had the family standards after dark. After dark. And that one's free on our page as well on our OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't remember how long that one was. Probably like half an hour. Half an hour-ish It'll... of the after dark. And then we have like the after after dark. Yeah. So we have the podcast. But we had a podcast with Lex. That's on YouTube. That's for free everywhere. We just talk about, you know, what we do now. And then we had the after dark where we play with her a little bit. She plays with us. We use some toys. We get naked. We get naked. Yeah. Do but some foreplay. But we're still talking on the podcast and everything like that. And yep. then... We and have then we scene. have a sex scene after. We have a sex scene after that you can that you can purchase um, on our OnlyFans as well. But hot, but it's yeah, like that was four hours. Yeah, that was a lot of podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of podcasting. I mean, it was podcasting and it was sex, but it was all of the above. So yeah, but that just lot. made me realize, like, because you know we're, we're we're in the sex industry and the podcast is just for fun. Mm-hmm. But it really set in stone that we have to set a full day for the podcast right yeah like it can't be doing five scenes or two no. three scenes and then do the podcast like the podcast has to be a day literally on its own because yeah. it takes that much mm-hmm. um so yeah lex that was the first one the after dark and i hope we can continue that trend i enjoy that very much and the, the, we have the, the lighting is a little moodier it's different it's just a different vibe so it's hot yeah if you guys haven't seen it check it out on our only fans family and this standards is why we got the faux leather couches mm-hmm. we can clean the cum couches <laughs> I'm calling them that because Lex is calling them that. Yeah. Uh, cummy couches. I was like, you the mean big comfy cum- couches? Yeah. The cummy couches. The big cummy couches. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys haven't seen that, I hope you guys do. I hope you guys all like check out our spicy site. We appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, stay tuned for all the new stuff that's going to be coming out. Because there's going to be a lot of new stuff coming out. It's fucking wild. Yeah. It's We're going to be bombarded with content for a while. So, yes. Hopefully, we'll get a good break after that and, and party hard this summer. Can't wait. Yes. Can't wait. See you at Shambhala, you crazy motherfuckers. Yeah, if you see us at, I mean, we're staying kind of early right now, but it's if, early. If you see us at Shambhala, feel free to say hi. We might even have stickers for you. I'm trying to get stickers. We'll see. Yeah, it's taking its time, but I got, I got my 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 person making us a custom logo, so I don't want to pressure him, but I want my logo, you mm-hmm. know. But yes, but he's great. Please say hi. If you're, if you're friendly, we're friendly, and but understand if you, but I mean I'm assuming if you go to Shambhala, understand the environment and understand yeah. the things that are are, are around Shambhala. If I'm true, me do me out. Understand, I might not be super social, but yeah. I'll try my best to say hi and be nice, exactly. of course. But don't exactly. don't freak me out if I'm true, me do me out. But come say hi and be nice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're we're obviously really excited for Shambhala because Mm-mm. we convinced some of our sex workers' friends to go and it's gonna be a hell of we're a even time. talking like we'll all just get tested beforehand and have our own little safe sex, sex worker orgies. orgy camp. that's the way to go to be honest ooh, ooh. yeah I, I can't even imagine i can't even imagine <laughs> that'd be so sick yeah baby wipes on baby wipes on baby yes. wipes but come to come say hi to us and our sex worker friends <laughs> <laughs> we might even make an only fans totem oh we're thinking about it yeah that'd be really cool yeah, if you have an only fans totem you can just oh there's the only fans totem that's the, there, there they are, are. And if we could get all the people in our camp to have OnlyFans shirts and then their ass on them, that'd be, be sick. Perfect. 
self-promotion fucking right off the rave <laughs> yeah i wouldn't because you know the cra but you could try if you want to uh but yeah thanks for listening thanks for giving us questions mm -hmm. but you know as bop it says do it again but better oh that's said whip it what bop it bop it whip it whip it pull, pull it, it. And then when you lose it, it's, ah, do it again. Oh, I, never, I, never, I never lost. Just really? kidding. I barely even play that game. I don't even know. <laughs> Mine would always say that. And I'd be like, wow, do it again, but better. So yeah. I like I like that saying. Yeah. And then for the next episode, be ready to see uh, the amazing Jesse Switch on on the podcast. Ooh, ooh. If excited. you don't know her, search her up. You're well, going you, well, to know her. Fucking know her. Yeah, I got to know her. Okay. Love you guys. Take care. Peace out.